lovely, lovely imps, today we are going to be reacting to a very, very interesting debate. That's right, there has been a debate between the famous YouTube comedy channel H3H3, specifically Ethan Klein, the front man of the H3H3 group, um, and a a suddenly very popular question mark, uh, tra ex transgender, ex transracial, uh, conservative pundit by the name of Ollie London. Now, Ollie London has gathered uh, in, in a lot of infamy uh, by basically going extremely, extremely hard against uh, trans causes after uh, deciding to stop getting surgeries. Now, Ollie London is a very interesting person in that uh, he stopped transitioning to to female. Ollie London was a male to female transgender person um, and has stopped transitioning and now goes by he, him pronouns um, and stopped um, citing surgeries as being one of the big issues that was driving them to stop transitioning. However, I think it's important for everyone to note that Ollie London was not most was not even getting close like barely any surgeries uh, for being transgender. Most of the surgeries that Ollie London was getting was actually in order to make himself appear like a Korean pop star to the degree that uh, Ollie London at one point considered himself uh, trans Korean. Um, in fact, uh, Ollie London was specifically not just trying to look Korean in general, but was specifically trying to look like a pop star by the name of, uh, I believe Jimin is the name, uh, a BTS, uh, a f very famous BTS pop star, Jimin. So it's a, Ollie London is a very strange individual with a very strange story. And it seems very odd to me that Ollie London has decided to make, to sort of make the center of this, uh, this quitting surgery around trans people, especially given that Ollie London has basically been invited on every single anti-trans conservative television show, uh, in the, re in recent months. Um, Ollie London is a very strange person, and I do not believe that Ollie London is a very honest person. Uh, individual at all. Uh, but we're going to see what Ollie has to say for himself in this debate with H3H3. I watched a small amount of this debate, and while I was watching it, I had to stop and go, I need to watch this with my imps. I have absolutely no doubt that this is going to be a super, super interesting thing to cover with my fans. Uh, as many of you will know, some of you are probably new to my audience, I am a trans woman. Um, I, uh, in my past, I actually temporarily medically detransitioned as a result of the horrific uh, uh, mistreatment I was receiving when I first uh, started to transition. Um, this is just a part of my backstory, uh, uh, my life story, uh, I guess. Um, my family uh, did not approve. I was uh, I was pressured to go into Christian therapy. I was encouraged to stop transitioning, and eventually I threw my pills away in the hopes that it would stop people from being angry at me and not wanting me to be a part of their family. Of course, as you may be able to tell, I have indeed, many years ago, started transitioning again, uh, and I'm very, very happy with that decision. And something I want to be clear about before we go into this is that there is a lot of disinformation, um, explicitly disinformation that is spread around trans people. However, the overwhelming scientific consensus shows that transition is incredibly, incredibly helpful for trans people. That trans people have a better, have better outcomes in life, have better mental health outcomes, and are likely to live longer when they are allowed to transition safely and with the care of a medical professional. Additionally, detransition rates are very, very, very low among trans people. And of the people who do transition, many of them 
are like I was, where they transitioned because of social pressure, because they were being targeted or, or ousted from their family, because of financial reasons, they can no longer afford their medical care, um, or uh, because of severe, uh, uh, you know, like I said, severe societal backlash. You can't get work, people are discriminating against you, stuff like that. Those tend to be the reasons that people most frequently detransition. And even still, the detransition number is very low. And I also want to say one other thing before we jump into this, which is that I support detransitioners. Anybody who decides that transition isn't for them, I believe they should have the full support to pursue their genuine identity, no matter what that is. It is possible that you begin transition and you just go, this isn't for me. Now, thankfully, what is often not talked about by anti-trans demagogues is the fact that it's actually relatively simple to stop transitioning. Um, most people do not immediately start transitioning and immediately get surgeries therein. It's in fact remarkably rare and very difficult still to this day to actually get access to permanent gender transition surgeries. Most people start on a low dose of hormones uh, and are able to stop at any point with basically no permanent changes whatsoever. Um, and I wanna say all of these things because I think it's really, really important uh, that we address what's actually factual and what's actually true uh, around these topics. There is a lot of politically charged messaging around trans issues. There is a lot of politically charged messaging around detransition. And I want people to understand that um, it's not only is it okay to detransition if you need to, but you should be able to detransition um, without having a bunch of right-wing vultures circle around and try to rope you uh, into becoming the the newest uh, poster child for anti-transition. And again, the statistics uh, are quite clear. Most trans people, the vast, vast majority, um, do not decide to detransition. And of those who do detransition, the most common reason is societal pressure and financial pressure. So I just wanna make sure that that's very, very clear and that everybody who's watching this understands uh, the facts of the issue before we jump into this broader conversation. Because there's going to be a lot of different things discussed by Ethan and Ollie, and I wanna make sure we have some basics laid out before we have to dive into some well, debate nonsense. Okay, I hope everybody understands that. Uh, Steve Dory says, boobs can be pretty permanent, but literally all humans have them. It's just a sign of full maturity. Um, yes, it is true that if you get to the point of like, if you're taking, um, if you're taking estrogen, if you get to the point of breast development, um, the breast's development won't go away immediately, but also keep in mind that breast development takes time. It usually takes about at least six months to even begin it, and at that, and, that, and even at that rate, it's quite slow. Um, I have a lot of breast tissue, okay? I'm just gonna be very honest about that. I, I, I have a lot of breast tissue, but I've also been on hormones for uh, almost a decade straight, with no interruptions, um, like, uh, so it takes a long time for these things to happen and you have a lot of opportunities to, uh, to stop. And also keep in mind that the breast tissue that does develop, uh, is, is, while it's not completely reversible, it's not gonna disappear completely, it won't even look the same. Um, even when I detransitioned, um, not to get too TMI, but the breast tissue, uh, that developed while I was on hormones, it, like there's, there is, there's like swelling basically that happens that disappears when you're off the ho hormones and it's basically unnoticeable. I was on hormones for a year and a half when I first started, uh, when I first was sort of forced to detransition and there was, it was unnoticeable when I went off. There was the most minuscule amount of additional fat on my chest at that point. Uh, so it's just simply not true that most of these things aren't mostly reversible. And the ones that aren't are generally relatively easy to deal with if you need to do that. So there you go. Just need to get all this shit out of the way. I know that was a bit of a, uh, I know it was a bit of a long preamble, but I, I think that given the 
uh, given the 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 current the the current hellstorm that's being uh, whipped up around trans people around transition and detransition that this type of thing is pretty important. So anyway, let's let's begin, shall we? Uh, uh, deeply concerned says my boobs actually shrank a bit when I started tea. That's very common. It's because blood flow changes, fat re fat starts to redistribute. It's actually very normal to have that sort of thing happen. Um, but it's of course complicated, and this is not a deep dive on uh, on uh, uh, HRT and the effects Ollie of HRT. Is on All right. So anyway, without any uh, further ado. Let us begin. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's watch it. Here is Ethan, and soon we will see Ollie London. And without any further ado, let's react. Let's let's do it. Let's get into it. In the chat, we're graced by the presence of Ollie. Let's go ahead and bring him on. Hi, Ethan. How's it going? Hello, Ollie. Nice to uh, like meet you and sit and chat with you. Nice to see. I like your outfit. Very French with the hat. Oh, thank you so much. And you, I think you look wonderful, too. We're kind of doing the same thing with our hats, aren't we? <laughs> Wasn't planned, but yeah, yeah. Let me see your profile. Turn to the side. Let me see how it's looking. Oh, you know, I've actually quit surgery. No, no, no. I mean the beanie. I'm, I, I'm not commenting on yours. <laughs> okay, that's a great start. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a great start. I meant the beanie. <laughs> Oh no, oh god, no. Oh no, here we go. Surgery. Has Demon Mama pre-watched this? I've literally only seen a few minutes of this debate. I have not seen the whole thing. I saw a few minutes of it and went, and then I was like, I gotta do this with my chat. So I've seen like 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't even, I don't remember where I jumped in on it. I don't think it was at the beginning or not. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let's let's do it. Oh, sorry. I, I want to see how the face beanie's like... uh, sitting, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, it's very cool. Uh, well, how's just, your day so far? So uh, we're just getting set up here a little bit. So tell me, um, since you, when was your last surgery? I'm curious. I'm curious. So I actually quit surgery. Um, well, my last surgery was last April, um, but I've completely quit and I'm never going to do surgery again. I had, um, like, recently I had a non-surgical facelift, but it's no surgery. It's Fred's. Because, you know, you can do the same thing these days without the actual surgery. And I was getting to a point oh. even where I would have probably died because I was going, oh, I've yeah. probably yeah. gone under anesthetic three times every year. I was going under anesthetic. So it was like, <laughs> wow. I could have. Okay. So again, not to immediately pause this thing, but just to remember, Ollie London is talking about going under anesthetic for cosmetic surgeries to look more like a Korean pop star. Not trans-related surgeries. This is the dude who was trying to transition to Korean, yes. Uh, Ollie was going under the knife to look more Korean, not just to look more Korean, but specifically to look more like Jimin from BTS. Not, which is, which is one of the things that makes this conversation so weird and that makes Ollie London such a strange character for the right wing to have latched onto. The thread thing is surgery. It's non-invasive, but it's still surgery. Yeah, you this is not, okay. Ollie London is not a very honest person and that's, I think, that's going to become apparent even within the first few minutes of this. Like I said, I've seen the first, I think like the first five minutes after this point, five or ten minutes after this. So I don't remember how many minutes I watched. Let's go. Died. Mm. Um, you know, I, I read somewhere that you spent $300,000 on plastic surgery. I want, I've always Holy wondered, like, where do you get? That's a lot of money. Where'd you get that money? Well, actually, I used to, before I started doing, you know, social media and K-pop and stuff, I actually was a successful personal shopper, so I had my own personal shopping business. Oh, oh yeah, my... yeah. Ollie London says, uh, I was doing K-pop. And what Ollie London means by I was doing K-pop, Ollie London is not a K-pop star. Ollie London is a K-pop super fan. So when Ollie London says, I was doing K-pop, he means as a fan, he was making fan content about K-pop. 
just so we're clear. London, so oh. you know, I used to dress like really, you know, like very wealthy ladies, celebrities. Oh, um, okay, like a stylist. Members of the royal family. So, you know, you dress them, I was dressing them in like Gucci and Tom Ford and stuff, and you get a very high commission for that. Um, so basically, Jesus. I did all that, spent a lot of the money on the surgery. I see, I see. Um, and, and now I've got a, I've got like a PR company basically helping influencers um, get publicity and help them get placements in like television and advertisements and stuff like that, hmm. getting the brand deals. Um, and the Damn, almost like Ollie London's entire job right now is just generating attention. Maybe, just maybe. The fact that Ollie London is a professional attention getter, a consultant for influencers, might begin to assemble why Ollie London went from being a uh, plastic surgery addicted K pop fan uh, to going and doing an entire media circuit around every right wing anti trans platform that would take him. Hmm. Of course, I do um, my own social media and I've got a book as well. Um, coming out this year Right, we'll talk about that, but did you say you dressed members of the royal family? Uh, not the British royal family, so I'd actually oh. um, Met with uh, Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands and she shot with me. She brought some um, You did you come with the queen? Damn. Yeah, no, but I, I met loads of people I met, you know, the Prime Minister of Thailand the ex-Prime Minister I used to shop with his wives and girlfriends. Wow um, Must have been hard to leave that behind because yeah. uh, you know you moved a professional shopper is what Ollie London used to do. It, that's what Ollie is saying here. I used to help rich people shop. To South Korea, and okay. we, we're all familiar yeah. with that whole journey. That must have been hard to leave all that behind you if you were doing so well. well that, um, actually, that was before. So the, when I lived in Korea as an English oh. teacher, that was actually before. So um, it was basically, I was younger. I wanted an experience abroad, went to do some teaching in Korea, and then... After I got back to London, I started like getting into fashion. I had some friends doing fashion, and then you know, over a couple of years, I worked my way up from a stylist to a personal shopper, and um, I see. kind of did that for about um, four or five years. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, Ollie, about. Well, first of all, thank you for coming on. I understand you're promoting a book entitled Gender Madness, which comes out August first. So congratulations! Mm -hmm. This is your first book. Uh, very exciting, Gender Madness. Also. Uh, you wanted to announce that you're the new spokesperson for Fairness First PAC, Caitlyn Jenner's organization, who famously mm -hmm. ran someone over. But that's actually not the most important thing about Caitlyn Jenner. Um, yeah, so basically I've got a new book coming out. <laughs> what? See, this is a part I didn't see before. I never saw this part before. That's incredible. This is why I knew I needed to watch this with you all. Oh. Um, August 1st. And basically, a lot of people have, you know, obviously followed my journey over the years. And um, obviously, I've struggled a lot with identity. And I had some very unhealthy behaviors, basically mm. due to my addiction to surgery, my body dysmorphia, which later turned into gender dysphoria. So... I really struggle with that and it was unhealthy and you know i completely accept my past you know i don't nobody cared until i put on the gender surgery you notice how that's the case do you know do you notice how many people are basically live plastic surgery as a lifestyle and no one really cares unless they are start they start getting surgery for gender and then all of a sudden it's the end of western civilization have you ever noticed that it's weird isn't it kind of strange it's kind of fucking weird I tried to deny the person i was and you know i had some kind of bizarre behaviors basically right. in an attempt to feel validated and to try and you know feel loved because I really resented so I, I the want to get I into all those things um, okay I'm, I'm really interested in your journey from you identified as a trans woman right and mm. then and then you kind of found God and pivoted to becoming a a uh, white British Christian man is that do I have the synopsis <laughs> correct yeah, it sounds complicated, but yes, yeah, so I'm back to being myself now and like finally found happiness. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So I just want to get a few things straight. So are you, do you still identify as gay? 
Um, yes, so I'm still gay, okay. but I have dated girls before, and you know, I, I still. So you're I'm bisexual, kind of more bi. I guess. Or... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, you don't identify as Korean anymore. Oh, no, correct. Obviously. And then, and then, so you, are you? Yeah, he did at one point identify as trans Korean. Pro gay rights. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, I'm, I'm part of the LGBT community. I support people. Um, my issue is just what's happening to children and also the erosion of women's rights. But, you know, I fully support um, people as an adult making an informed decision to change themselves. But I don't support children being medically transitioned. So you do support trans people in gender uh, in general. Yeah, according to what according to research. Hold on. I want to see where the source of this research is. Yeah, according to numbers that were uh, compiled by WebMD, by doctors who work with WebMD, uh, in, in 2020 alone, nearly 230,000 cosmetic surgeries and, uh, and 140,000 non-invasive co cosmetic procedures were performed on teens ages 13 to 19. Just in 2020, 230,000 cosmetic surgeries and 140,000 non-invasive cosmetic procedures were performed on teens ages 13 to 19. So keep those numbers in mind once we start talking about gender-related surgeries. And we'll get some numbers on that very soon. 230,000 per year cosmetic surgeries on teenagers. Not gender, just cosmetic surgeries, just so we're clear. Let's keep that in mind. And you don't hear conservatives making a culture war out of cosmetic surgery in general. You don't hear them making a, a culture war out of breast augmentations. You don't hear them making a culture war out of breast reductions. Just keep that in mind. So absolutely. So I support, you know, people as an adult making a decision if they want to change and they're happy with that. But I feel that unfortunately the trans movement has been hijacked by a small but growing group of trans activists which are basically pushing kind of um, an erosion of women's rights so that's what i really take an issue with there's a lot of trans people have a lot of trans friends i know what it's like to be trans that really just want to live their lives and they're actually having a tough time now because of these trans activists so my issue is with mm. trans activists and not actual trans people okay so you say here's a tweet of yours from just the end of last month not that long ago you say, the goal of the trans movement is not simply to exist. The goal is to erase women, mutilate children, sexualize kids, take away free speech, class pedophilia as an identity, uh, remove mm. parental rights, indoctrin indoctrinate kids, and they're willing to do violence to obtain their goals. When you say the trans movement, it seems to me that you are speaking generally about trans people uh, having this goal. And when you say trans movement, I don't know exactly what you mean, because it seems that most trans people that I've seen, maybe with the exception of Caitlyn Jenner, seems to uh, disagree with this, seems to identify as being parts of the trans movement. So what is the difference between... What is the trans movement? Who is a who is a member of that? What is see? This is a really good question because um, I actually really think this is a fantastic question for Ethan to ask because um, that's one of the things that interestingly happens. You see this too, by the way, with the the broader groomer rhetoric generally. Um, conservatives are interestingly uh, interestingly vague when they're tweeting about it, when they're saying that uh, the that transgenderism needs to be eradicated from public life entirely the words of michael knowles you know see if you press him on that which people did he said well i'm just talking about the radical trans movement but then the rest of the time they seem to basically paint everyone in that group if a trans woman reads a book at a school to kids even if that book is literally any just a, a children's book all of a sudden that's grooming if there's a drag event uh during the day all of a sudden that's grooming <clears throat> if there is a non-adult drag event that allows young people to attend that's grooming and then but then They'll say that. They'll say it on, on, on media. Do you guys remember Tim Pool? Uh, I talked about this after the, uh, after the Colorado Springs shooting, which was a targeted hate crime against trans and gay people at a gay club. 
Um, Tim Pool said, you should stop grooming then because there was a drag event during the daytime at that event. The drag event was not targeted at children. It was not a sexual event for children, but Tim Pool said that that was justified. So there's this interesting, weird little sleight of hand that they do where they, on when they're confronted, they'll pretend, oh, we only care about these imaginary radicals who we conveniently don't have names for when pressed, and then they immediately, when, no, when they think nobody's looking, they switch back to just broadly denouncing everybody. It's very weird. It's a it's a sneaky rhetorical laundering. Is this organization? So what, okay, so what I'm talking about here is the trans movement in the in the trans activist movement. So the people pushing these ideologies. So we see every single day. Just yesterday, the Texas state capitol was uh, invaded. The trans invaded. protesters went there. We see women being attacked at women's rights rallies. Physically, well, that's interesting. I didn't see anything about that. Let's see, Texas uh, capitol invasion. Uh, I don't see anything about that. That's weird. You'd think that would be in the news if the capital got invaded. Let's see. Maybe if we do Texas capital trans protest. Oh, wait a second. Oh, at the, at the beginning of this month. Oh, oh, everybody. This is what they meant. A handful of protesters holding signs peacefully showed up and got detained and handcuffed. Wow. So this is what this is what Ollie London meant. This is from May 2nd. So this is a story from May 2nd, a couple of days ago, uh, that happened slightly earlier, or that happened last month. And this is what it looked like. This was the invasion right here. A handful of peaceful protesters who then got arrested. Wow, incredible. Yeah, interesting, interesting. That was an invasion of the Texas Capitol. The attacks, and we're seeing this trans activist movement pushing um, for gender affirming care on kids, which is basically putting 11, 12 year old kids on very harmful hormones. So that's what I'm talking about. Wrong. When I talk. Remember at the beginning when I said that there was going to be a lot of disinformation here? I'm just going to take some time to debunk these points when they come out. No, actually, uh, teens are very, are in fact almost never given HRT. They are given puberty blockers. Puberty blockers delay puberty. They don't do anything else. They just delay puberty with the goal of giving a teenager time to sort out their feelings about gender so they can decide whether they want to resume uh, the puberty of their birth sex or whether they want to take hormones as an adult. That's actually what children are given. Young trans people who approach their doctor and say, I am having gender dysphoria. I am, st I, I do not want to go through a puberty that I don't want to go through. How can you help me? And doctors say, well, we have puberty blockers. So just to real quick, already onto the misinformation, onto well, the I'm disinformation. I'm not generalizing every single trans person. I'm talking about the current trans movement, which has been hijacked by trans activists. And, you know, I really think that- And yes, as, fi as Fig Fairy in YouTube chat points out, puberty blockers are also predominantly more frequently used for cis kids with hormone imbalances, as we of course know. So we do have research actually on puberty blockers being used mostly on cis people. Trans people that have been living as a trans person their whole life, they need to speak out against this because the problem is, the LGBT community is being hijacked by these well, that, uh, radical let, let people. Me ask, and... uh, sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but I just hijacked. want to address things you said already, right? So you say mm -hmm. that the uh, people who are demonstrating at the Texas Capitol are part of this trans movement who wants to, you know, sexualize kids and this whole uh, list of things. They were there to protest a bill, SB 14, that would ban gender-related treatment for minors. So um, these guys are, I guess, see that as an affront as being transphobic. But uh, you disagree because what is minor? Anyone 17 and under? Do you believe that ever there would be a 17-year-old that needed gender-affirming care? Um, so minor is basically classified anyone under 18. And what these people were protesting against was the fact that Texas is trying to pass a law to ban 
um, hormones and puberty blockers and gender reassignment surgery being administered to children banning puberty blockers notice that now the truth starts to come out you get pressed and oh oh it was hrt and surgery so and puberty blockers yeah that's part of the reason the reason why people are protesting against that is because it's insane to ban puberty blockers puberty blockers are needed for all kinds of people but they are also needed for young trans people who are who are afraid and are suffering mentally because they do not want to go uh uh, through a puberty that will make their body feel alien or unhealthy to them. It's a fairly simple thing to understand. This is done with medical supervision. This is done with the consent of the per person involved. It's it's deranged that they would ever want to ban this. So of course people are going to protest it. Basically, so you know, I think these people. Firstly, you know, that was an unlawful protest. You can't just go into a state capital and do that. You know, and if they. <laughs> You can't just you can't just protest in the state capitol peacefully. Oh, who's ever heard of the First Amendment? Are you in favor of only lawful protests? Well, I think you know people need to follow the law, and if they want to have a protest, they can have that dialogue. But outside the state house, you can't just storm in a state house. I mean, it's comparable to January sixth. Oh, sorry, sorry, I really should. Okay, here we go. Comparable to January sixth. Okay, hold on, hold on. I want to bring that picture up just one more time comparable to january 6th there's the picture of the event that is apparently comparable to january 6th right there super serious super honest ollie london it's when people stormed the capital which was unlawful as well so i think you know these people were not protesting about their rights being taken away it's the fact that they were protesting against a bill that would have actually protected children so i think that's really harmful some would say that uh, it's actually harming kids, right, to make it illegal. Yeah, just a reminder, just a, just a reminder, here's a picture from January 6th, okay, everybody? Here's a picture from January 6th, all right? Here, up here, you have pe an actual crowd of people barreling in with the goal of stopping the election. They erected a noose in front of the, on the, on the floor because they wanted to, in their words, hang Mike Pence. Same, same thing though, right guys? Right? Same thing. Legal to do this because as, as you probably know, or I think you did mm -hmm. at one point, is that uh, gender affirming care on people, on children is, exceedingly rare it's actually so rare that it's um it's it if to express like irreversible gender changes on children is some jade monkey with the incredibly generous tier one sub i just got here is this the guy who's k-pop gendered yes this is ollie london who formerly identified as trans korean and was getting surgeries to make himself look identical quote unquote to an actual person named Jimin, who is a performer with the with the the uh, K-pop group BTS. So yeah, they were trying to make themselves into somebody else, and also identified as a trans person and also transracial. Super wild. Let's continue. Thing like you know, uh, I've got the number here: zero point zero 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 four nine three percent of U.S. children aged. Six through seventeen go through irreversible gender uh, uh, changes. So I, I guess I'm just curious because in in the cases where they do undergo it, it's usually uh, to save their life, right? Because they're probably they might be suicidal or or yeah, right. And th and they go through like panels. They go through multiple rounds of talking to psychiatrists and doctors. So so I guess I'm just curious why is it you think that this is threatening kids instead of actually helping kids who are at high risk of uh hurting themselves. So Ethan about 10 years ago when gender affirming uh, care was performed on whether that was minors or adults there was a lot of checks and balances now it has become so easy so they don't have this This is not true. Th this claim, the idea that it has become e very easy for people to have access to uh, gender affirming care is completely and utterly false. And I need to be 100% clear about that. In some places, it's actually become harder than it was 10 years ago. Now, in some places, it has become easier, but nowhere is it easy to get access to gender affirming care. Um, 
as an adult, as a 26 year old adult, I had to go through two psychological examinations in order to qualify for a surgery that is given out on a daily basis to cis people. When I got an orchiectomy, uh, uh, the removal of the testicles, uh, I had to have two psychological examinations for that to happen. Even though it happens to cis guys all the time, it is a, a constantly, and they don't have to go through any psychological exams when they're getting it done. Isn't that an interesting thing? And that was just a few years ago. That was less than 10 years ago. Psychiatrist appointments anymore. They don't have, you know, having to wait several years to transition. Thank you, Louis, now it's a very fast track process. And that's the real issue because many of these teens, and we're seeing thousands of teens uh, being transitioned and put on hormones. The number's really gone up in the last few years. Now, many of these teens are struggling with other issues. There's a, a high case um, around one in six of these children have autism. They're being misdiagnosed. There's also kids with depression, bipolar, and they're being told it must be all of these issues must be because they're in the wrong gender. And oh, yeah, totally. This is this is insanity. The idea that every person who shows up with autism or depression, that that every doctor in the United States is just going, yeah, it must you must be trans. That's insane. It's actually so far from reality. You may as well say that there are wizards that are turning people trans. That is that is how far from reality it is. The idea that <laughs> people are screened for and treated for depression, anxiety, and autism every single day. And I assure you that that is always checked long before, unless somebody comes in and says specifically, help, I'm having gender related stress. I don't like, my body is torturing me. I, I feel uncomfortable with the role that I that's being forced on me. Then people might go, hmm, maybe it's a gender thing. This is insanity, absolutely insan absolute insanity from Ollie London. They are being fast-tracked. Um, there was a case in Missouri at the St. Louis um, Children's Hospital, and basically a whistleblower unveiled that they only required like one session with a therapist to get a child on hormones and puberty blockers. So that's the issue when a system is being exploited. And you know, there's been trans people forever throughout history. There's there's so many examples of trans people. But the thing is now is, you know, previously as difficult as it was, because it's so hard when you're trans to struggle and to think every day that I'm trapped in the wrong body. It is horrific to go through that. But the problem is, you know, years ago, they would have two to three years they would have to undergo. Yes, and the suicide rates were unbelievable. When when you used to arbitrarily be banned from a a willing and informed decision to pursue gender transition, and you would have to sit there and suffer as your body gets further masculinized or feminized against your will, that is a torturous experience. Additionally, it's highly invasive. It's belittling, it's dehumanizing to be treated as if you have no agency over your existence in life and the suicide rates reflected that, which have gone down in places where they've be accepted the actual scientific consensus. The, we don't even have to talk about science here. It's a simple, matter of people should be able to have the freedom to express themselves as they desire. They should have the ability to shape their body as they desire, well within reason, okay? If Ollie London can get $300,000 of surgery without needing a single psycho psychological letter, I think that we should let trans people have their hormones without any letters, okay? I'm not saying there aren't extreme situations where somebody is addicted to plastic surgery, but we shouldn't assume that any person who wants to change their body is addicted to plastic surgery. We trans people are so dehumanized it's not even funny they're treated like they can't think they are treated like crazy people they are treated and even though, oh my God, the trans people I've known in my life, and I've known a lot of trans people in my life, a lot of them, okay? That's just how it goes, all right? Uh, when you're trans, you meet a lot of other trans people. It's how it goes, okay? And uh, you have to in order to survive in a world that treats you like shit. Um, 
uh, trans people are so above average educated on medical information, on treatment information, on the ins and outs of the medical uh, system, even on the legal proceedings of, of various states on how you can change your name. I've taught multiple cis people how to do name changes, not because they're trans, but because they wanted to change their name for their own reasons, okay? You guys don't, like, like the amount of discrimination and dehumanization that's directed at trans people is absolutely disgusting, and fucking assholes like Ollie London are the ones who are pushing this type of shit. Psychiatrist appointments, doctor's appointments, in order to qualify for a transition. Now it has become so easy, and there are thousands of kids being fast-tracked and put on hormones, prescriptions, Wrong. and some kids... Numerically false can now go to states um, like Colorado or Washington State, which have become sanctuary states. And they don't I, I want to I want to actually them. address what you said about them. Um, you had said something about Jamie Reed's allegations, mm. right? But th that was debunked, right? Because the parents and the uh, the children there who actually were uh, attending that facility actually told a completely different story. Have you read their account of that? Yes, so I saw okay. recently that the they mm. did an internal investigation. They said it wasn't true, but you know I don't oh, that, believe well, that. Well, that seems significant. Uh, yes, but I don't so believe that at all because right. you don't they're trying to cover the, their back. You don't believe the internal investigation? No. Because yeah. See, Ollie London is doing a classic. A classic. Uh, we hear this from Nazis a lot. Interestingly, you guys, you guys have ever, you guys have seen some arguments with Nazis. When you argue with a Nazi and a Nazi cites some uh, statistic, usually a racist statistic, and then you go, actually, here is hard evidence that shows that you're incorrect about this. And he goes, yeah, well, I don't trust it because it's Jewish science. Ollie London is about to do the exact same thing. Because there were multiple parents when the Daily Caller originally did the interview of Jamie Reed, there were multiple parents that said basically their kids weren't looked after once they left the clinic. There were no checks and balances, and there were parents confirming that. So, you no. Know, and guess what? The investigation revealed that Jamie Reed was a fucking liar, and that the story that Jamie Reed was fixated on was from a parent who was politically motivated. Imagine that! Imagine that! Somebody lied for political points, and it turns out they were lying! Imagine that! I believe the investigation has a lot of bias because so. it's done by the clinic. Yeah, real quick, I just want to read a comment here. Killjoy says, remember that whenever these people say sterilization, they completely ignore that most states as early as 2014 had sterilization laws in place and required you to out yourself in the newspaper. The statistical reality is that the state sterilizes people en masse while puberty blockers only have a small chance of that outcome. States required it uh, required it originally, so it was a 1.8, a 100% sterilization rate. That is literally true okay um let me tell a quick anecdote okay uh the state that i grew up in um required exactly what you are talking about uh, it required proof of uh gender affirming surgery uh uh which in there according to the laws at the time uh this was in this would have been in 2014 at the time the law stated that it had to be bottom surgery which means you had to be sterilized in order to qualify for uh you had to have proof that you had done that surgery in order to qualify to change your name and ge uh, sorry to, not your name to change your gender marker so in order to stop getting uh, uh misgendered in public something that keeps you safe you had to do that also I had to publish my name change in the local newspaper. That was a law and that is still required in many states in the United States of America, that if you are changing your name for the purpose of gender, you have to list that in a, in a local newspaper. You have to put in a classifieds ad that says, uh, old name is hereby changing their name to new name. I had to do that. In my office, or not in, it's actually not in here anymore. It's down in the basement. Down in the basement, I have the news clipping from when that, when I had to do that. I have the clipping from the newspaper when I had to publicly publish that I was changing my name. And that was common and is still the law in some places. Just so you guys understand the state of affairs, when Ollie London is talking about fast tracks and blah, 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 it is fantasy.
that only exists inside of the minds of fear-mongering conservatives. That's such an invasion of privacy? Yes, it is. It's almost like, it's almost like these laws are designed to cause as much pain and as much opportunity for violence as possible. It's almost like these laws are designed to specifically oppress and reduce the population of trans people. It's, doesn't it almost seem like these laws are genocidal in nature? That the laws are designed to force you to put yourself in a dangerous situation where your family and friends can uh, re retaliate against you or harm you, where you can be tracked by people who might hate you? Hmm, just a teensy, teensy bit, huh? Let's continue. And they're profiting. So the cl so the internal investigation said uh, there was no uh, there was no wrongdoings. The patients said there was no wrongdoings. So I guess I'm just curious. Uh, the people who are claiming that there was something wrong there is like the Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson. Are you are you saying that they don't have a bias? Well, I mean, a lot of people have a bias and stuff, but, you know, we have to look at these gender clinics as a whole. Project Veritas exposed multiple clinics the other day uh, <laughs> talking about medically transitioning 8 to 11 year olds. So we have to acknowledge that. Project Veritas. That's what we're going with is fucking Project Veritas. Oh, my God. For real? <laughs> Just so you guys know, Project Veritas is a literal propaganda outlet. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They don't even pretend to be a news outlet. They are a literal propaganda outlet. They do fake investigations, um, and they have actually a string of ruining the lives of people who work with them. What they will often do is they will coerce uh, everyday, like, low-paid workers to say certain things, or they will have long conversations with them and get them to say things uh, by mistake. Uh, that end up getting those workers in trouble and because Project Veritas doesn't have to protect them because they're just asking questions to these workers. Uh, workers at places like Planned Parenthood, at election offices, etc. will sometimes mess up uh, or literally lie or all kinds of other things because they're just everyday workers uh, and then Project Veritas will put it into a movie and then pr the people that Project Veritas uh, um, it, it interviews or or uses as a source get totally roasted for one way or another um there's a actually an, a really amazing documentary about project veritas it's a uh it was done by a uh a really really popular youtuber by the name of timba on toast and he went and looked at the history of people that have been interviewed at, by project veritas and how many of them have ended up getting completely and utterly screwed over by working with the propaganda outlet veritas it's so fucking funny that ollie london would bring up veritas here Oh yeah, also let's not forget that the leader, the face of Project Veritas, a guy named James O'Keefe, uh, has been ousted, uh, uh, has been ousted because of uh, uh, severe, credible allegations of engaging in sex cult behavior. Like no joke, no ifs, ands, or buts. Like the, the Veritas ousted their own founder and leader because the allegations against him are so bad that they can't remain in contact with him that this is going on in a lot of clinics and a lot of these clinics are trying to cover their backs by trying to paint a rosy picture that it's perfect. Did you it's say fine. Project Veritas? Yes, they did an undercover yeah, that's investigation. The guy, uh, that's the guy who got ousted for being like a sex criminal oh, and like scam they artist, James O'Keefe. That's his organization, right? Um, he's not part of that organization now. So the yeah. organization that he left, um, Project Veritas, the original organization, did this investigation. They don't have a lot in, of credibility, uh, Veritas. It seems like every investigation they do is just chock full holes of uh, untruths and just blatant lies. I don't think it, it's a very credible institution for pulling data from. Do you guys remember when? Uh, do you guys remember when one of early Project Veritas's early projects, where James O'Keefe? Uh, 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 epically trolled his his university by uh, by lodging a human rights complaint for Irishophobia, and then he did an offensive Irish accent to try and pretend, and he just wasted a ton of people's times. And then he published that as a documentary. Remember that? I remember that. Wow, so funny. 
sure there's multiple organizations like Project Veritas that do expose Which other this. Ones? Um, <clears throat> um, so Gays Against Groomers and Ambassador for them, they are also oh, exposing no. this happening in clinics. Mm -hmm. Gays Against Groomers? So who's Have you heard of them? I haven't, but who's the groomer then? Um, so basically, Gays Against Groomers is an organization of hundreds of LGBT people. It includes trans people as well. Basically, these uh, this organization is calling out the harms. Uh, they're doing investigations of gender clinics, calling out the harms of doing this to kids. Because look, Where's we the get grooming that some kids... In, though? That's the part that I find like really inflammatory. Because grooming implies that trans <laughs> people or trans activists, and it's what you said here in this tweet, that they're pedophiles, that they're sexualizing kids. So where does that evidence come from? Because it's one thing to say we're against... A gender affirming care for minors, mm -hmm. but it's a whole different thing to say, you know, they're grooming. Well, that word is basically used because we're seeing many um, uh, drag shows, like adult drag shows, where kids are attending and it's very sexually explicit. So that is a form of grooming. We also see um, these kids' books in public libraries and in schools where they're teaching kids about drag and being trans. And, you know, that's not a subject. Notice how vague. How vague Ollie has to be here. Oh yeah, we saw um there's these drag shows. Um I don't have any specifics, but yeah, there's totally drag shows where they're doing sex acts on children and nobody is secret, nobody knew about it. It's just secrets. And um also they're reading books to kids. Object a kid should hear, so that is a form of um, yeah, like totally. Um and they're really bad and evil and stuff. Okay. So, kids. I've heard, mm -hmm. I know that there was that one uh, drag show with kids that was kind of a hot button issue. Where, what other examples uh, can you think of of drag shows with kids uh, involved where they're being groomed? So there's, um, in the last year, there's a an investigative journalist, Taylor Hansen. He's exposed at least 20 drag shows in Texas that are, oh, really? are called 20? all ages drag shows. Uh, they're called all ages drag shows and they're basically doing sex acts on stage. They have uh, breasts, you know, they're doing very inappropriate things. Oh my God, they have breasts? Holy shit. You mean to tell me that well over 50% of the population simply for having breasts is doing sex acts on children? These people are insane. Conservatives are insane. If, con if you try to hold conservative, if the conservatives actually tried to live by their own standards, they, we would literally have to live in, it would be burqas. Uh, the, 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 full, the full coverage burqas is the literal only world that they believe in. Ollie London's example was they have breasts. That's, oh God, oh my God, these people are so insane. They're so insane. So, no, it's just- So hold on, sorry, Ali, you're, 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 you're making so many claims and I just want to get to each one. Uh, you mentioned mm -hmm. an organization, Gays Against Groomers, which yeah. was founded by Jamie Mitchell, is that right? Mm-hmm. So Jamie Mitchell and their partner are ultra MAGA Trump followers, and there's nothing wrong with uh, being a Trump supporter, but they're also anti-transgender, they spread anti-transgender propaganda with QAnon conspiracy theories, and, oh. and interestingly... Wow, what a reputable organization. The founders are straight. So how is it that they can make a gaze against a groomer's <laughs> organization when they themselves oh, are not even gay? It. That seems disingenuous. Well, you know, they had a gay thought once. Ethan, come on. Ethan, Ethan. They had a gay thought once, okay? That was it. They were... They were watching porn on Pornhub, and you know, they were starting to have a good time, and the autoplay feature was on, and it started playing gay porn, and they didn't quite stop, and you know, they might have come a little bit, just a tiny bit, maybe just a little bit of pre-cum, you know, to the gay video. Maybe that's what it was, okay, Ethan? Come on, man. Genuous. Well, firstly, that's a Wikipedia page. You know, Wikipedia has a lot of bias with the um, woke um, people that <laughs> so write Jamie them. Mitchell <laughs> is gay. She's gay. She's a lesbian. All of the people, you have to be LGBT to be a member How do they um, check of Gays Against Groomers. So there's How do they, how do they the Okay, sorry. I got to be honest, though, for a second. Ethan is doing awesome. Um, one, of the, one of the things that's making Ethan look so good here is that Ethan is letting Ollie London lay out the rope that he will hang himself with. Uh, figuratively, of course. Um, 
Ollie is flying all over the place saying stupid shit that you can't even imagine. And all that Ethan has to do is go, hey, that's just blatantly false. Hey, here's a small thing. That's blatantly false. By the way, can you be a little clearer about, about this specific thing? And Ollie has no answers. Ollie has a list of pre-memorized NPC-like dialogue options, and it really, really shows. <sighs> oh my god. Let's continue. No, I mean, you know, if someone says they're, they're gay or bi, you know, you accept that. You don't say, oh, can you prove that you're gay? How can you prove that? So, I mean, you know, Jamie Mitchell is a lesbian. All of the members are lesbians, trans. It's not anti-transgender at all. They support people being trans as an adult. But what they're trying to do is calling out the harm that we're seeing um, caused to children. And that's the real issue here is about protecting kids. Okay, then prove the harm. Prove it. But they never can. They can never prove the harm. They just have to make shit up. Because whenever you ask them to prove the harm, you get a picture of, of, a, of a drag queen just standing there going like this. And then they go, that's the harm. That's the grooming. And you go, how is that grooming? Grooming has a definition. Grooming is when somebody uh, uh, over the course of time uh, trains, a, like, like, a manipulates a child to be abused. That's what grooming means. And they go, no, well, a drag queen standing there like this is the same, well, it's grooming, you see? That's, they, they never have an answer for this because it's all a fucking lie. Because it's all a fucking lie. Oh, also incredible. Oh, incredible. Gays Against Groomers is not a grassroots organization. A report by The Advocate. A new report pulls aside the curtain and reveals the background of those working to spread anti-LGBTQ hatred using the hate account Gays Against Groomers. The founder of Gays Against Groomers, Jamie Mitchell, and her partners are ultra MAGA Trump followers who are spreading, spreading anti-transgender propaganda with QAnon conspiracy theories and links to extremist militias. According to Media Matters investigation last week, holy moly, GAG was formed last year to protect trans kids from sexualization and has gained prestige in right-wing circles alongside libs of TikTok. Oh yeah, libs of TikTok. Media Matters found that GAG isn't M Mitchell's first venture into far-right social media. She was a prolific MAGA Twitter user in 2016 and 2017, pushing QAnon conspiracy theories. During the 2020 election cycle, she frequently corresponded with Ali Alexander. Ali Alexander, who was just exposed for predating on minors. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ali Alexander is the guy who is literally just exposed for sending, uh, for literally sending requests for nudes to minors. Minors. He's boasting about it. He's a literal pedo. Insane. Let's continue. Let's continue. So go back to your claim about grooming. So you, you brought up uh, the drag show for kids. Is there any other examples or are we just talking about drag shows? Because I have to assume that the drag shows, even if it's as widespread as uh, v Project Veritas claims, which heaven knows... Uh, how credible they are. Uh, there's got to be other examples to to make such bold claims as that there's a whole movement trying to sexualize kids. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at the music industry, you have really shocking performances like Sam Smith, for instance, who is <laughs> um, pushing a specific agenda. He has concerts which are allowing all ages. And, you know, what? if you want to be a musician, do whatever you want, but don't be doing sexually graphic. So now it's, now it's, now it's musicians dressing dressing skimpily on stage that's every fucking musician that's ever lived musicians are performers yeah they dress up sexily that's what they do they're musicians what the fuck they're oh my god this is so this is such a ollie ollie Lund, ollie london is literally just brain worms there's no human left there's only brainworms. Oh yeah, I saw people mad at Ollie London because Ollie London did a performance at the uh, at the Grammys and the Grammy performance. Well, it was a song called Unholy and 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 oh my God! And Sam Smith dressed up as a devil. That's evil. Things he's doing literal uh, satanic imitating panic. blow jobs. He has you know fetish gear on, and there's kids in the audience. So it's not just about drag queens. It's about protecting kids in general. So even if it's even if it's Cardi B, you know, I don't- By the way, if you support the rise of the demons, 
you should subscribe to Demon Mama and you should press like on the video right now. Don't wait anymore. Subscribe and like right now. And I'll keep bringing to you this awesome stuff. Don't succumb to the satanic panic. Instead, recognize the power of hell. Let's go. I don't think kids should be at a Cardi B concert if she's twerking or doing like something very, very sexual. I you think it's just about protecting it's grooming. Kids. I mean, you know, you you turn on the TV. I mean, you see stuff worse than that, right? On YouTube mm -hmm. and stuff. I, to say yeah. they're grooming them seems pretty disingenuous and actually really homophobic and transphobic to put this label that they're groomers because you understand the gravity of such a claim, right? Well, it's a very loaded word. I, I get that, but it's not an attack on the LGBT community at all. It's about of course it is, you idiot. calling out specific cases. It's not an attack on trans people. Calling out specific cases where children are being exposed to something that's here we see it again. Super vague. Gonna call gonna accuse somebody of the crime of grooming. But then you're just super vague about it. Oh yeah, they're groomers. Well, I don't have any examples, but you know they are. They're totally groomers. Guys, grooming is a severe, severe moral transgression. Okay? It's not something you just allege uh randomly, okay? Jesus fucking Christ, these people. Highly inappropriate and trying to raise awareness of that. So it's not a label that's attached to gay people, lesbians, trans people. It's literally about calling out specific instances. Of, I want to um, ask you about the, something children. specific. Actually, since you bring it up, I have seen something troubling mm -hmm. from a, a trans person that I thought mm -hmm. was kind of gross. They were selling... It was like a kid's t-shirt with a trans person on it, and then they had like kids' toys with trans people on it, and it was kind of gross and groomy. Have you seen anything like that before? You know, I've seen t-shirts that the um, lieutenant governor of Minnesota wore to protect trans kids with a knife on it. You know, mm. things like that. I've seen oh t-shirts. Oh my god! So, literally, Ethan says, have you seen an example of a trans person sell sending selling something groomy to kids and her example is a t-shirt that says protect trans kids with a knife on it this is exact this is case in point exactly what i'm talking about uh you're a groomer you're a groomer oh what what grooming is happening ollie london oh my god someone's being groomed yeah i saw someone who had a t-shirt and the t-shirt had a knife on it and it said protect trans kids that's that's not, that's not grooming. That's not even remotely, it's a t-shirt with a knife on it. Apparently, uh, apparently, uh, Mark Echo, uh, needs to go to prison now because he's, you know, he's put all those, he put all those, uh, those shirts out there with skateboards and knives and rhinoceroses and stuff. You gotta arrest Mark Echo. That says protect trans rights with AK 47s on it and stuff. And you know, I don't think that's helpful messaging for, and that's just trans activists, by the way, Ethan. This is a small number of people, and that's who I'm calling out. That's who gays against groomers are calling out. It's not the trans community as a whole. Specific trans activists who have highlighted, um, sorry, have hijacked the trans movement. So actually, you know what's interesting, Ollie? If you go to your website right now, your merch website, I was actually talking about your merch. Oh, no. B -b 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 Bazinga! Oh, no! You are actually selling kids lunch boxes with a picture of you depicted as a trans woman, and you're selling. No, it. that's not as a trans woman. Oh, that's it's not. not. As a trans woman. That's just a K-pop picture of me. I I had a feeling you would say that because here it is, you wearing that design, and it's pretty obvious to tell that yeah, from correct. just like a month ago, and this is when you were trans. Wearing my merch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's appropriate to sell this to kids? Well, it's a lunchbox with a picture of a K-pop cartoon. There's well, it's you as a trans. It's you as a... Grooming. According to Ollie London, grooming is a shirt that says protect trans kids with a knife on it. But according to Ollie London, a picture of herself or himself as a trans woman doing the ahegao face is not grooming. Trans woman. It's the logic of conservatives, Republican brain in case in point.
to me as a K-pop star, it's nothing to do with being trans or not. That's just a cartoon of me as a K-pop star. So it's not, but at the that's not inappropriate. Right, but at the time you were a trans woman. Correct. At the time I was a trans woman, but so that, there's nothing inappropriate. So it's you with as that. a trans woman. That I was a trans woman at the time. That picture does not depict me as a trans woman. It depicts me as a K-pop star. But I find that interesting that you're willing to uh, make that separation when you're making such. Gen Damn, this is a this is a a kill shot from Ethan right here. I know that this is a little silly and it does kind of fall into the hypocritical thing, but Ollie London has no response and looks so bad here. And by the way, this is the type of shit that I want to see more of. I want to see people putting conservatives on the spot with this type of shit as frequently as possible. Because let me tell you, normies, normal people who aren't super plugged into the political sphere like myself and... To be fair, most of the people in the political space, I make political content, obviously, we're not, we're, we have a niche interest over here. But uh, normal people see this type of bullshit and go, wow, Ollie London, you are you look like a stupid hypocrite and you look like you're full of shit and you sound really bad here. This is such a, this is such a, this is such a dunk. Absolute slam dunk from Ethan here. General claims about the... Uh groomers and stuff because to me by your own definition this is pretty groomy and even if you go and this is it's all an on, well, hold on it's Ollie, hold on what's that oh, no. even if you go on your website right now oh, i just you... saw it right here right when he changed it three to four years old five to six years old seven to eight years old selling the ahegao t-shirt to the three and four year olds Ooh, oh no Turn the same graphic Un Ollie London, Ollie Merch Squad, as you depicted as a trans woman. And if you look at the available sizes, it's just kids. Three to four, do you think it's appropriate for a... Th Somebody said Vosh said that the letters look like buttholes. Okay, they do kind of look like that. I think they're supposed to be balloon letters, but I will say, I can see what people are saying when they say they look like butthole letters. They do kind of look like butthole letters. I think they're supposed to be bubbles charitably, but... Yeah. Three to four year old to buy this shirt? Yeah, of course. Any K pop fan, if they want to buy my merch, they're absolutely entitled to. There's nothing inappropriate <sighs> with that merch at all. It's a that is a trans user. woman, Ollie. You're not understanding You're your own logic. At straws. You're clutching at straws. How am That's I? A, you a were a trans. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's follow this through. You were a trans woman when you made this. There's a picture mm -hmm. of you wearing it. It's obviously yeah, you correct. as a trans woman. Here's you as a trans woman. And here's you as a trans woman. On the shirt, on a kid's shirt. How am I clutching at straws? Well, you're clutching at straws. It's an innocent cartoon. It doesn't say anything about indoctrination. The tongue children. is it's somewhat sexual. How the tongue is out like that? It's a little disturbing. Yeah, okay. this is this is an ahegao face. Like this is very obviously no one who's honest at all would not acknowledge that this is an ahegao face. However, see, rational and smart people would go. An ahegao face in and of itself is not doing any harm to anyone. Actually, a stupid ahegao face, while yes, it is a sexual reference, sexual references aren't hurting anybody. There's sexual references in SpongeBob. Guys, like I always break this one out. I always have to bring this one out. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, 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 hold on, let me, let me just show you. Um, this one, the classic, the classic in the SpongeBob movie, which played in theaters all across America. Okay, here you go. Here we go. Perfect. All right, here you go. The SpongeBob movie, rated PG, played all across America. This is a sexual reference. This doesn't hurt anybody. It doesn't scare anybody. It doesn't injure anybody. Nobody is harmed. Nobody is being groomed. It is a joke that is sexual in nature, but it's a joke. See, if you have, if you're not a crazy, insane, uh, 
a conservative who believes that trans wizards are mind controlling children across America, you can actually think about things and go, yeah, actually, uh, a random reference, vague reference to sexuality is not actually harmful to anyone. But of course, Ethan is 100% correct here to say that by Ollie's own logic, this is grooming. If it is grooming to have a t-shirt that says protect trans kids and has a knife on it, then absolutely an Ahegao shirt that is being directly marketed and sold to three to four year olds is absolutely, absolutely grooming by Ollie London's own logic. Mix Dizzy says there are actually rape jokes in SpongeBob. Yes, obviously they're in SpongeBob. There's actually a lot of raunchy jokes. Um, uh, SpongeBob hands Gary a couple of bars of soap and says, whatever you do, don't drop them. Yes, there are all kinds of raunchy jokes in SpongeBob and nobody cares because it's fucking SpongeBob. Oh yes, and of course there's the scene there's the scene where SpongeBob watches porn. Yeah, the the he's watching the uh he's watching the invertebrate the invertebrate porn and it has the uh sea anemones going like this and he's getting all sweaty and going, "Oh yeah, whoa." And then Gary comes to the room and he goes, "Ah!" and he screams and changes the channel. SpongeBob, as it turns out, sex jokes are very commonplace and they don't hurt anybody. But of course, Ollie London is an idiot and a, uh, a hyper-religious psychopath grifter. So, didn't Squidward literally have him dress up in a maid outfit? Yes, SpongeBob dresses up in a maid outfit multiple times. Yes, there are tons and tons of jokes. Um, there are tons and tons of jokes uh, in SpongeBob that are inappropriate, quote unquote. And sane people go, who cares? When I'm doing a K-pop pose, that's just, you're just clutching at straws. No, why is the tongue out? I find that a little uh, provocative. Ethan, it's a cartoon. You're just trying to trying to make well, a joke. Well, I don't out know of it. because you're well. Well, no, I'm not trying to make a joke. I... Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, Scooby Doo. Do you know how many jokes there are in Scooby Doo? Animaniacs. I think this is a somewhat serious issue to resolve here because. <laughs> If you, no, I'm being serious, Ollie, because let's at least be consistent. If we're going to accuse people of grooming kids, you know, and, and which you have made a, 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 a short lived, but uh, uh, somewhat oh, profitable. Oh, yeah, the, the, the infamous Animaniacs fingerprints one. That was the one I was thinking about. Yeah, Animaniacs had tons of them. Like, Animaniacs had really raunchy jokes. Not even just slightly raunchy jokes. Animaniacs had really raunchy jokes. And that show was a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, oh. Pepe Le Pew. From the good old days when America used to be, used to be upright and proper. Looney Tunes. You guys fucking kidding me? Shrek is absolutely loaded with sexual jokes. Eh, these people are such frauds. Just remember, Christians are Christians, specifically hyper-conservative Christian nationalists like Ollie London. These people are joyless hacks. They don't believe what they say, and the things that they say they believe would lead to a world that is completely and utterly joyless. It would mean you'd have to ban Shrek. You would have to ban every Disney movie that's ever been made. You would have to basically have the Bible and nothing else. And then guess what? They would ignore the fact that the Bible has literal explicit sex in it. Anyway, let's let's continue. We got to get through this shit career of doing then I think we need to uh, you know uh, We need to get on top of this. Uh, I just don't think it's appropriate to be selling well, lunch boxes if that, with a trans if, woman if on that it. lunch box if, Ethan if that lunch box had something inappropriate or sexual that would be wrong But this is an innocent cartoon of me doing a k-pop pose There's nothing wrong with that particular picture if it was an inappropriate or in a sexual way That would be completely wrong and of course I would never sell that but that's an innocent drawing of a cartoon Ethan Let's say a kid's at a drag queen show. That's grooming. And let's say they are selling lunch boxes to the kids of a dra with a picture of a drag queen on it, doing a cute pose or whatever, right? Not sexual, but they're in drag. Do you think it's appropriate for a kid to carry that lunch box? Well, I think it's appropriate if the kid's at a drag show that's inappropriate because some drag shows are generally not inappropriate. But okay, a lot so of them are oh, 
Oh, so now some drag is okay, even though apparently earlier, Ollie London was saying, oh, this right-wing conservative freak said there was drag shows going on with kids at them. So now some drag shows are okay. Interesting. We got the backpedal on, we we're, were watching a backpedal in, re, in live action. Okay, that's interesting. So some drag mm -hmm. shows are appropriate and some aren't. Correct. It's about if you're going to do anything in front of kids, it should be uh, PC. It should not have anything sexual. But sadly, a lot of these shows are doing sexual things. So kids should not be there. If, if the merch is there and it's a show that's sexual, they shouldn't be there in the first right. place. Right. Okay, this is interesting. So you're saying it is okay for kids to go to drag shows? I'm not saying that at all. I don't think they should in, in general, but just, I'm just saying oh, if they're not wait, so kids shouldn't go to drag shows, but some drag shows are okay, but but it's grooming for a kid to go to a drag show if they have breasts. This is getting very confusing, isn't it? Sexual, and I would assume it's not because it's for kids, right? I mean, if they're doing sexual stuff, I would consider that. Obviously, everyone would consider that uh, inappropriate, mm -hmm. but... I believe you've just said drag shows are uh, safe for kids. In fact, you would no, even yeah, be okay. Yeah. Well, hold on. You would even you even said you'd be okay with them carrying a drag show lunchbox. No, look, I just don't think kids should be anywhere that is putting ideas into their heads. You know, if a show is innocent, you know, that's obviously better than it being a sexual show. But I still don't think kids should be exposed to gender ideology. So, but so, what about this you know, lunchbox? Kids, gender ideology. Kids. There comes the gender ideology. So now it's about gender ideology. Now it's not about whether kids are being harmed or not. It's not even about sexuality. Now the truth comes out. It's about gender ideology. And now you have to ask the question, what's gender ideology? And when you say, well, what's gender ideology? They're going to go, oh, well, it's grooming. And you go, well, what's grooming? And they're like, well, it's drag, it's dra it's kids at drag shows. And then you go, well, wait a minute. I thought it was about the gender ideology. They're like, yes, because they don't have an actual logic. It's all bullshit. What they are appealing to is prejudice. What they are appealing to is phobia. What they are appealing to is hate. They aren't making a coherent argument. They don't have a coherent outlook. They just don't like trans people. And Ollie London is a grifter who has realized that he can sell this these basic talking points for literal money and fame to a conservative audience that hates trans people. Literal, just a, a string of pointless lies. That Bullshit has nothing to do with any kind true. of ideology. It's a K-pop picture, so yeah. But you're in drag I, in the picture. You're you're you are, I mean you're you're trans. I'm not in drag. Well, you're trans. Sorry, yeah, you're right. You're not in drag. I misspoke. You're trans. You're a woman. You're expressing yourself as a woman on the box. I'm just. It's just a cartoon, Ethan. I don't know why you keep going on about it. it's a cartoon. It's just a cartoon. I mean, I, I feel like you're trying to downplay the significance of this, Ollie. I, I just afraid <laughs> that some of your uh, some of the people that you associate with might consider this grooming by your own uh, standard. I'm just looking out for you and your reputation. It's just silly, Ethan. It's a, it's an innocent cartoon. If it okay. was an inappropriate picture, that would be wrong. Okay. What do you make of this picture? Uh, are these kids in are these kids in danger? Your thoughts. Well, I haven't seen the video of that particular show, and it depends what book they're reading. If the drag queen is it teaching about it appears to be depicting ideology. some fish, a couple of fish in the ocean. It seems like that's the now. Rainbow. Remember, these types of pictures w are used constantly. Pictures no different than this are spread around all over by the exact same people, the exact same people that Ollie London just cited. Okay. Ollie London cited people like Tucker Carlson, Project Veritas, Gays Against Groomers. They will spread an image like this and say that this is an example of groomer. Now let's listen to what Ollie has to say. Fish. The rainbow fish. Uh, it seems to be the rainbow fish, Ollie. Well, it, it, you know, I think a lot of these books are pushing even subtle messages on gender ideology, trying to tell. Oh my God! <laughs> The rainbow fish is pushing subtle messages of gender ideology. See? Do you see what they actually believe when it comes down to it? A drag queen 
in normal clothing, dressed like anyone else in the room, okay? Let's look at that. This drag queen is dressed like anyone else. Nothing inappropriate about this outfit. Reading a children's book that is read in every school in America, one of the most popular children's books of all time. The, the Rainbow Fish is one of the most popular fucking children's books of all time. And all of a sudden, Ollie London has to bend over backwards to come up with a reason why this is evil. Why this is secret gender ideology. Holy rainbow moly. The rainbow fish. Uh, it seems to be the rainbow fish, Ali. Well, it, it, you know, I think a lot of these Christ. books are pushing even subtle messages on gender ideology, trying to tell kids you should tra be trans and become LGBT. And kids should make that decision on their own. So if that book is teaching them about, you know, transitioning <laughs> or becoming a drag queen, that's inappropriate. It's and that's the rainbow the fish. With... Yes, but I haven't read the book. I can't see what the book is. So based on that one picture... Does that book contain subtle messaging that's trying to tell kids to change their gender when they shouldn't be thinking about things like that? What? And, you know, in Florida, they've obviously banned books um, in the Florida is. Me OK, so Ollie London, he's he's actually going to do uh, he's actually going to speak in favor of book bans now. Florida, which is banning books en masse to the degree that entire school libraries are being decimated. And now Ollie London is going to talk about that in a positive light. Holy that teach gender fuck. ideology. And there's a lot of books, uh, kids' books. There's a book called The Gay ABCs, and that pushes gender ideology. From For two-year-olds, it's two plus. And I don't think that's appropriate. Who cares? Wait, that... what, what gender ideology is being pushed with The Gay ABCs? What is wrong with a book that's called The Gay ABCs? What's wrong with that? Tell me. Just should be reading kids' books that are completely innocent. They shouldn't but even be- But what do you make of this? Kind of what do you make of this lunchbox, though? <laughs> Why did you keep going back to the lunchbox? Well, well, because, literally... well because, because, you know, <laughs> it's got a picture of a trans woman on a kid's lunchbox. Got a picture of a K-pop star on the lunchbox. Who's the K-pop star? <laughs> Who, who's the K-pop star? It's, it's you, right? It's me. You, yeah, it's you. you. As a oh my god. He's describing himself as a K-pop star. Just remember, he's not a K-pop star. He's never been a K-pop star. He tried to make himself look like an actual K-pop star with surgery. And and Ollie London wants to tell you that you are you are you are insane. You're the insane one. All of the all of the trans people in America who just want to use she her pronouns, you're the real crazy people. Not a person who obsessively fanboyed over a Korean pop star and got surgeries to pretend to be that pop star and still sometimes confuses his own life story with that of somebody else's life story. Remember, oh my, oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Killjoy says, I pointed this out earlier. He still acts like he's actually Jimin. Oh my God, that's so, that's so deranged. Oh my God, that's so insane. And this K-pop star is a trans woman, right? I was trans at the time. The, the right. image doesn't necessarily depict any- Did that photo of you, uh, uh so- is this... Not even, even, it's not even a photo of me. It's literally a, it's a cartoon. cartoon. I had right. an anime cartoon drawn of me. Right. Would you anime. buy it for your kids? I mean, Would I wouldn't want I, I wouldn't just because I don't want to support you financially. But uh, okay. th but theoretically, I, I don't think I'd have a problem with... No, I wouldn't have a problem with my children uh, looking up to a trans person. Of course not. What would be wrong with that? No, and, I, and, and Ethan, look, I don't have a problem with trans people at all. I'm just saying that certain things, when it comes to gender <laughs> identity, if, if transgenderism is being pushed on young kids in preschool or even elementary school, when they shouldn't be thinking about that, I think it's wrong to expose them to that. I think Exposing it's them kids to trans discover people. who they are. Exposing them to trans Sorry? people, like this lunchbox is. <laughs> right? You're really upset with that lunchbox. No, he's right. It, Ollie London does not want to answer the question, but Ethan is actually just right here. Ollie London just said, we shouldn't be exposing, and I, like, word for word, Ollie London said, we shouldn't be exposing young people to trans people. Ethan said, to trans people, right? Ollie London says, yes. And then Ethan goes, you mean like the lunchbox, which depicts you as a trans person, which you are deliberately selling to three to four year olds. And then Ollie London just goes, uh, uh, and short circuits and restarts. Jesus fucking Christ. These people are broken. But no, but I think it's a really uh, important point that you're not, you know, coming to terms with. We're exposing kids to uh, a trans woman. Don't you think that's wrong? <laughs>
Why is it still on your website, at least, you know? You know, it's it's come on, even. It's just, I don't know what to say. It's a cartoon of a K-pop right, star, right. and it's very innocent. It's just like a little anime drawing. It's nothing. You know, if I was doing something inappropriate, if I had, you know, protect trans kids on there, that would have a message. That would have a loaded gender ideology message. The gender ideology of protecting trans kids from harm. Insanity. Insane person. Just so mentally broken. But it literally says Ollie Squad with a cartoon of me doing the peace sign. It's like super cute, super innocent. Just like most K-pop stars are like super cute, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, aren't you making like the he the ahigo face a little bit? What do you think? Yes, that's the point I made. It is the ahigao face. Ahigo, that's I've never heard that pronunciation before. But yes, that's the point I made. It's it is an ahigao face. Yeah, look, we even have a goofy emoji right there. You can see it in the chat. Look in the chat, everybody. We have one. We have an ahigao. It's the exact same face. Look at this shit. Okay, this is it. The ahigao face. This is the iconic one that everybody everybody memes about. This is the one that everybody uses in every meme forever. And it's literally the face that she's making. There's no sweat marks, but the eyes are the same. The eyebrows are the same. And the mouth is especially the same. Here's another one, just as another example of how common and well-known this image is. And notice that Ollie London even said, even said it's an anime. Ollie, just like two seconds ago, he said that it's an anime face. I think I should make it more masculine. No, the Higo face is like some kind of hentai thing, isn't it? I have no idea. That's when you're yeah. eyes and stick out. Lying! You can tell! Ollie is lying here! Ollie is literally just lying! Oh my god! I, I have no idea. <laughs> Trying not to laugh. Oh my fucking god. Your tongue? Oh, really? Well, my eyes are you wide open. You don't know about that? My eyes are wide my open. My eyes are wide open. Hold on. Wait, my eyes are wide open. Wait a minute. Si what do you mean by that? All of the ones... The Ahigao face has open eyes too! It's literally the Ahigao face! Oh my god! Ollie is such a fucking bullshitter! You go face? What a fucking no, bullshitter! I don't believe you. Come on. No, I watch anime like I watch Attack of the Titans. That's and stuff, straight but cat, my brother. <laughs> This is it. And you... Attack of the Titans. Oh, I love it. I love it. You can see the resemblance, right? Here's the Ahigo face. Go on. It's from, oh, it's like a hentai it. Wait, this is like the same. Well, wait, this is actually a slightly different one, but a perfect example, a different face, but yeah. Difference. But okay. You, but you see the resemblance, right? <laughs> can you put them side by side? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, that's quite a cute drawing. Right, but that's like a woman like orgasming is what that is. Well... Or like well, lust, it's think. like a lustful <laughs> kind of uh, sexual gratification. Avery, you're really clutching at straws. Am I? No, like, no, I'm sorry. He's not clutching at straws here. Hold on, watch. Ready, guys? I'm going to do it. This is for you. Okay, everybody? There you go. Now you have it. Okay? It's the Ahigao face. Eyes open, I'm doing the peace sign, and what you is... kind of dissect it and say this, honestly. <laughs> right. It just seems to me that even as a trans person, it, you shouldn't be exposing kids to that. It seems like you're shoving gender ideology down kids' throats by selling... Everybody's going to clip that. Of course they are. I hope my, I hope my tongue looked fine there. God damn it. box with a trans woman on it. You don't, you don't uh, see I my... I finally fucking did it. I have not done that. I have not done that on stream i've managed to avoid it and now i'm gonna get clipped and i'm gonna look it's gonna look like shit or something point at all you don't get it no i don't you know if i i would see your point completely if for instance it had a uh, messaging on there like some political because i don't think kids should be exposed to politics either um you know political or gender ideology message if that was on there that'd be different if it was a sexually suggestive image but this is literally an innocent cartoon. I've got my eyes open. I'm doing the peace sign. You could not get innocent. What do I need to do, Ethan, like, to please people? Do I have to, like, close my Come eyes? Come on. Well, I personally Come don't necessarily on. have a problem. What, what is your fascination with the eye wideness? I haven't said anything about that. Uh, about, about what, sorry? 
You said, what do I have to close my eyes? I didn't know what that meant. You kept mentioning about like the uh, eye wideness of how wide it is. I, I don't know why you keep bringing that up. No, I'm just saying that, look, in the picture, my eyes, it's got very, it's not even me, by the way, it's a cartoon, but the eyes are very wide open, right. like Ugly glistening. To depict it I'm just saying like, what's wrong with having my eyes open? Like we're human beings. We have to have our eyes open. Like, would it be about better if I closed my eyes? I don't know. I don't even know what that means, Ollie. Here's a reference to a uh, popular culture with the ahigo face. It's, you know, like kind of an e-girl thing. You're probably aware of that. Well, I'm not an e-girl, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, but you're on the internet, and it's from anime, which you seem to be. Okay, but let's move no, on. I, you know, I do know, I do know anime and stuff. I don't know anything to do with that pose. Literally, I've got my mouth open like this. Peace. I always have my mouth open, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Sure. Come on. Okay. Let me see that again. Looks really natural when you do it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, girl. So are you, so the trans, but you identify as a male now. You're not trans. We're over that. Oh. No, I'm like, well, basically I got to a point where I was going to probably die from the surgery I was doing. And, you know, I was really mentally. Oh, oh, good. Nasty. You're watching right now. Never mind. I just sent a, a timestamp to chat. So, uh, <laughs> now you, now, you, now you're watching. Y'all don't even need to message you. You can grab it if you want to. Oh, now we have the clip. Uh, uh, Posadas John, make sure you put that in the clip channel. Just, just put it in the clip channel. I, I, I won't be able to save it for later. Merrick rushed in from another room to see Demon Mom's Ahagao face. I'm not Merrick, I'm just at her computer. <laughs> well, hello, not Merrick. Uh, welcome to the chat. I hope you're enjoying your time. Also, oh my god, welcome to Earth with the unbelievably generous $50 donation. Thank you so much for the incredibly generous tip. It is tips like yours that make this show keep going. This is a viewer supported show, 100% viewer supported. So please, uh, uh, and thank you very, very much uh, uh, for the support. And all of you who, who might want to tip, consider throwing some my way, like the amazing Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth asks, you have 653 videos. Any fun plans for video 666? That's a good idea. I should do a special video. I'm gonna think on that. That's a really good idea. Let's continue. Struggling, um, had a lot of mental health struggles based on a variety of issues, which I talk about in my book um, from when I was being bullied very severely as a kid. Um, Damn, was... Mama, you didn't have anything planned. To be fair, I didn't really think about it. I didn't really think about the, the video number, but it is true, actually. Video number 666 would be relatively special. I need to keep an eye on that. That's going to be how many days from now, approximately? That'll be 13 days from now, which means, oh, goodness. Okay, hold on. I need to send a message. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put a note for myself so I can think about that because I, I, I usually don't do that. Uh, okay, I put it in my chat, in my group chat. Hmm. All right. 13 days from episode 666. I'm going to have to think about that. Maybe I'll do something special. I, I mean, it's too, that's too soon. 13 days is too short for me to do my new spiritual deconstruction, which I am working on my, my new spiritual deconstruction video. Anyway, we got to get back to the react. Everybody, okay, thank you for the suggestion, but we got to get back to the react, everybody. That was funny, but let's get reacting. We got to react. Let's finish this reaction. I was always told I was like ugly or I looked like a monster or, you know, I was more feminine or I had man boobs. Oh, um, good so, idea, so I just Kill used Joy. to have all those things and it left me with traumas. So it kind of messed up my head. And okay. as an adult, I didn't deal with that in the way that I should have. You got made fun of for, for having man boobs. You got made fun of for being effeminate. Hey, you want to know what might help that? Maybe the thing that you call gender ideology. Maybe the world would be a better place if people weren't mocked for deviating slightly from gender norms. Maybe if people weren't ruthlessly mocked for being slightly effeminate while being perceived as boys, maybe the world would be a better place. Holy moly. But again, Ollie London, not an honest bone in his body just a grifter. I should have had therapy, I should have spoke to someone. I, instead, it was almost like self-harming. So all this crazy surgery was me kind of um, 
kind of lashing out at the bullies and it was very very destructive for me and for other people so, so you know I'm, you I'm glad that, to be over that do you think that people who are bullied are at a higher chance of becoming trans yes definitely so um i talk about this in my book there's a lot of studies there was a study in finland by the top transgender um clinic that um was basically transitioning a lot of kids and they said around i think it was around 45 percent of the kids had experienced severe bullying so that led to their gender Do you think just maybe you're confusing correlation and causation? Don't you think it would be more likely that people are getting bullied because they're deviating from gender norms, which you just admitted to having experienced? Do you think maybe people who are likely to be trans in the future might be more likely to deviate from gender norms and in our psychopathic society they might be getting bullied because they're not uh 100 percent normal normal in their gender perception do you think maybe that is a more accurate interpretation of that maybe just maybe or are you going to jump to conclusions to say the most transphobic thing imaginable well we already know the answer don't we we already know the answer don't we <sighs> dysphoria um identity but so, there's so also your, the other your, side your where... theory is that the bullying leads to the dysphoria not the dysphoria leading to the bullying which would no, be was, more logical I was, no, no i was just about to say as well but there is also the flip side of that where kids that are the kids are being bullied because of their identity you know because maybe a boy is more feminine or a girl is more like a tomboy so okay, they're so also you do being bullied for that but in, so in certain um, studies, the one in Finland at Tampere University, they found that there was a significant correlation between a kid being bullied and then the onset of their gender dysphoria coming afterwards rather than before. But, you know, of course, it works both ways. I have that theory you're citing in front of me. Uh, ta it's Tampere University, Finland. Yeah. Here it is. Let's read the conclusion. It's a, here. There's the abstract and everything. Let's... Witch Knight Melody with the incredibly generous $10 says, You made me snarf lemonade when you did the ah gal face, and my laughter woke my woke all my cats up. Still, that made my night. Keep boosting the signal, Demon Mama. You know it. Thank you very much for the support. Let's see. The conclusion says gender identity, especially non-binary identity. Tiaho says, did we just watch Cleaning Mama? Yeah, I was just wiping off the screen. Uh, there was dust on my screen and it was annoying me. So I wanted to get rid of it. ...is associated with both being Tidiness. bullied and perpetrating bullying, even uh, when a range of variables, including internal stress and involvement in bullying and the opposite role are taken into account. This suggests that bullying during adolescence may serve as a mechanism of maintaining heteronormality, which I- Interesting that! This is from the study itself! How interesting! Isn't it funny how conservatives will, will literally cite studies that actually openly and blatantly disagree with them, and the conservatives will just lie about what the study actually says? Incredible, isn't it? Incredible! I think what that means is that the bullying uh, actually results in people rejecting their transness uh, in favor of hetero hetero normality. So, so it seems to be saying the opposite, actually, of what you've claimed it said. Do you see what I'm referring to? Hetero normality. Yeah, no, I see that. I yeah. see that okay. article. That you know, if you actually read the full study, which that's I've read the, the conclusion. Full study, you, you can find it on the National Institute of Health. Oh um, no, this is the study. Yeah, no, this is this is the uh, this is the study. It's the dot oh, gov. Yeah. Having the study on hand just like that is so perfect. Excellent move by by Ethan to have to be able to bring up the study right away and reference it right away. Excellent move. Just completely obliterated Ollie. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Uh, and then this is the author's conclusion right there. I mean. That's pretty much that. This is the one you're talking about. Do you disagree? Yes, but it's look. The study's also saying it's associated with being bullied and being um, uh, the perpetrator. So it's basically saying yes, that but the right, but the the message. This is the last sentence. So let's not let's read this together carefully. Mm -hmm. It suggests that bullying during adolescence may serve as a mechanism of maintaining hetero normality. Do we understand what? Heteronormativity, but yes. That says? 
No, I get what it's saying. It's basically right. saying that some of these kids that have been bullied um, will maintain their original identity. Because... No, 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 no. It's saying that the bullying is used to pressure people to not express themselves honestly, that it is it is pushing people into the closet. The bullying is about keeping people in line, and that's what the study shows. You fucking dishonest piece of shit. The bullying. Correct. But the study also, if you read the full study, the study also speaks. There's a high correlation between there's two different findings in the study. There's a study. There's a finding that around 45 percent of the kids are bullied and that causes the gender dysphoria. And there's also a part of the study which also says, like the conclusion is finding that some of these kids are bullied because of their gender dysphoria and it makes it worse. Oh, so there's, it, it there's seems two different like findings. If, if two outcomes are possible, then it doesn't seem that interesting. I wonder why you bring it up. Well, no, uh, read, read the full study. It also talks about this the it, correlation man. between autism. I mean, this is the author. They wrote the conclusion right here. This is their... That's 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 a small summary oh, on yeah, Yahoo News. The, oh, come the on. Author. This is mad that's their Pope. conclusion. Correct. Right. But if you read in the Who National better Institute to draw a conclusion than the author of the study? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you... I've read the full study multiple you have times multiple from the National times. Institute of Health. Mm -hmm. According to this, bullying prevents more kids from transitioning. Do you believe that we need more bullying? No, I, I'm an advocate against bullying. I think whoever gets bullied, it, it's so, so wrong. I've been bullied myself, and I'm an advocate. But if for bullying trying to stop results that, in less transitioning, then that, sh then that, according to what you're saying, is the best outcome for these kids. No, I don't, I don't agree at all. No kid, even if a kid is feminine or a girl is a tomboy, they should not get bullied. No one should get bullied. They should be provided with support. But if somebody wants to transition, I'm not against people transitioning. I just don't think it's right as a kid because a lot of these kids are going through so many issues during that time. They are not in the right frame of mind to make an informed consent decision. If a Look, child even, is suicidal, do you believe that they should transition? So there's a lot of um, clinics and doctors that uh, use this argument. There's oh. a clinic called Kaiser Permanent. Oh, oh. Oh, love the direct question here. Let's see how Ollie responds. Let's see how Ollie responds to a very direct question. So there's a lot of um, clinics and doctors that use this argument. There's a clinic called Kaiser Permanente, Permanente in California. Kaiser, Ka um, Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser Permanente, by the way, is one of the largest uh, medical uh, insurance and hospital groups in the entire country. Just so we're clear, this is not like a tiny thing. And to be clear, all medical institutions have problems. This is not me saying they're flawless, but just so we're clear, Kaiser Permanente is not a small organization, okay? Just so we're clear. It's just an insurance conglomerate, not a clinic. Um, yeah, but don't they have, doesn't Kaiser Permanente, uh, don't they set up hospitals? Yes, they do. They set up hospitals. So they, they don't just, they're not just insurance. They also do medical research and they also set up, uh, they also set up clinics. I have, uh, Insomnia Noir says, I have the one, the 400 page report that was published by Kaiser Permanente. It explicitly states several times that the mental health concerns of transgender youth are especially important. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so basically they have used with multiple people that have since detransitioned, Chloe Cole and Layla, um, another detransitioner. They basically told them your kids are going to commit suicide if you don't transition them. But what they said afterwards is they actually felt worse six months down the line after the transition because they've got hormones in their body. They've got puberty blockers. Um, and, and they you even understand had double that the vast majority of people that transition don't regret it. I think it's like 95%. Yeah, it's literally, Nin literally, I, I believe it's actually 96%, but still. Chloe Cole is another gaze against groomers detransition grifter. Wow, what a surprise there. Who could have, wow, isn't it weird that the only detransitioners that you ever hear about are ones that are astroturfed to hell by groups like Gays Against Groomers and the Heritage Foundation? Isn't that fucking weird? And Fox News, isn't it weird? So fucking weird. Almost like these people like Ollie London don't actually give a shit about the actual problems that detransitioners face uh, and only care about the ones who are willing to uh, mindlessly repeat the message that they want them to. Hmm, almost like it's a fucking propaganda campaign. 99%. Are you aware of that stuff? You, 
you don't you don't hear the cases of the detransitions. Are you the aware, gender- Ollie, that ninety nine percent of kids that transition do not regret it? No, I don't support that statistic. I ah, think it's wrong because these criminals. From- I don't care. Ooh, I ignore the science. Uh, I cite science when it is in favor of me, and I ignore science when it is in when it disagrees with me. I don't actually have a real critique of that number. I just don't agree with it because it doesn't agree with me. Ollie London is such a fraud. From what the, from what authority do you dis, disprove that statistic? Well, the, look, these clinics make these studies. They don't even do follow up studies. There's an example of a. Do you not trust studies? Have, because you just told me to read one. Look, what I'm saying is the gender clinics make billions of dollars every year. Their studies are what? skewed and biased. Gender clinics make billions of dollars every year? F- name one. Name one fucking gender clinic that's even making money. Most gender clinics, the very few devoted gender clinics that exist, do not make billions of dollars. Most gender clinics that exist are charity projects that are done by nonprofits. You fucking psycho literally just lying oh my god they review of 27 studies involving almost 8,000 teens and adults who had trans transgender surgeries mostly in europe u.s and canada one percent on average expressed regret for some regret was temporary but a small number went on to detransition uh but that's one percent uh, that seems like 1%. a very small amount to be uh, singularly focused on. And this is 27 right. studies, so this is a massive kind of conclusion, <laughs> right? Uh, a scientific conclusion, a, a consensus, if you would. Yes, but what I'm saying is there's a clinic, for instance, Tavistock Clinic, which was the main clinic in the UK. They were actually exposed. They were doing studies as well. Here they weren't more to check the with the detransitioners. They didn't bother to check with the detransition. They didn't check how the hormones oh, were affecting over Oh, I know what you're here. talking about. That English one for, for... Yeah. Yeah, so that that one, if I recall, I looked into that. People say it was shut down. It was actually... Wasn't it... Um, it's being they, shut down. Right, but... Still open. Mm-hmm. They're, making, they're actually making a bigger one so they can serve more needs. I, I actually... So it's not really being shut down, actually. Um, Tra- that say one the is, name again. Tra- what is it? Um, it's called Tavistock. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, if you, this is a, the, the whole Tavistock, uh, clinic situation, Ethan is correct in that, uh, the Tavistock clinic is closing down and they are opening other clinics to, to service more people. However, the, the general situation around the NHS and gender care is very complicated. And I would recommend watching a video uh, let me just get this real quick. Let me get the title of the video. I'm going to recommend a video real quick. A fantastic video. Hold on. Let me just let me just get the title of this video. It is called I emailed my doctor 133 times. The crisis in the British healthcare system. Uh, I'm going to link this in chat so anybody who wants to watch this one, I highly recommend it. This is by uh, I emailed my doctor 133 times by Philosophy Tube. This is a video that, vi- in great depths, uh, uh, explores um, exactly what is going on with gender related care in the UK. Um, gender related care in the UK is. is brutally difficult to access. The waiting lists have people waiting sometimes as long as half a decade to get care that they're already approved for. The system in the UK is a literal death by waiting system. Um, And it's only like this for gender care. Other types of care do not have this type of wait time, but because of the way that the system is designed, people who need gender-related care are basically forced to go underground or to use gray market or even black market sources uh, because of the way that it's designed, and it is a severe problem. That video outlines how the problem functions. It's very complicated because, of course, you're talking about a national healthcare system and the policies of a national healthcare system. But if you're watching this and you're interested in learning more about the problem specifically which includes the Tavistock clinic you should uh go watch that video because that's a uh a very very important video and it and it's a complex issue that is not easily hashed out in a debate form you can't just 
uh, sum up this very complicated issue easily in a debate. Um, yeah, so check out that video by Philosophy Tube. I emailed my doctor 133 times. Um, Rock says, you have one of the best sounding keyboards I've ever heard. Thank you very, very much. This is a custom keyboard that was made just for me with my sound setup in mind. And I get compliments on it constantly. It was made for me by my wonderful friend, Grime Dango. Uh, uh, and I, it is a, like I said, a fully custom keyboard. I adore it. It is my one of, it is my pride and joy. I absolutely love this keyboard. So I'm happy you also enjoy the sound. It was designed for your ears. Seriously. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. So that one's actually being shut down this year because basically <laughs> the National Health Service, which is basically looks after all the hospitals in the UK for the government, um, they actually said that there were a lot of um, ethical violations and stuff, and they also changed their policy based on what happened at that clinic via internal investigations. They found that many of these kids were being pushed to transition without having checks on their mental health. And they're basically being pushed into it and fast track very quickly. Do you quickly. think it's significant, though, that... The, the irony, the disgusting dishonesty of Ollie London claiming that, that trans people are being fast-tracked in the UK, it is so blatantly false. It is the literal opposite. They are being slow-tracked. It has been heavily documented. It has been admitted even by the NHS itself. Ollie London is such a disgusting liar. This is beyond a lie. This is like the lie of lies. I already mentioned before I already mentioned before that Ollie was lying about people being fast-tracked in the United States, but in the UK, it's like a super lie. Slow-tracked? I don't know. What do you want? What do you want from me? Of the patients, of the actual <laughs> people who get transition, only 1% regret it. Do you, uh, you're not acknowledging that. No, I don't. I I don't trust uh, studies. Why? Even if you're saying it's twenty-seven, 27 studies. studies. Then why did you tell me to read this one, Ollie? You use <laughs> studies when it's convenient for you, but you don't. People when... are also mentioning that uh, the NHS has extremely long times for chronic pain and endometriosis as well. Uh, good to know. I didn't know that. Uh, thank you for that information. Just wanted to make sure I shouted that out. Let's go. When it, when it goes against your thesis, I don't understand your consistency with studies. Do we like them or no? <laughs> What I'm trying to say, Ethan, is the gender clinics are very, very powerful. Do we, they no, no, no. control Ollie, do we studies. like studies or not? All studies or no I studies? I like studies. Oh, we do. You no, know, I like studies. You, you do like you studies. Have to, but you have to always look at bias. You know, the clinic in Finland was a transgender clinic that made the study. So they had different findings to the many of the clinics in America that are saying there's a low detransition rate. But there are thousands of detransitioners <laughs> out there. They're just not sharing their stories because of fear of being attacked and... Uh, you know, they get abuse every single day from trans activists. So there's thousands of kids out there. By the way, just real quick, um, there are, take take a listen to this, okay? This is from Reuters, okay? So a very, very reliable, uh, uh, this is from, this is from uh, 2021, okay? December 6, 2021. Trans people waiting years for gender health care as demand surges. When British tattoo artist Eva Echo found the courage to come out as transgender, she quickly sought specialist care to help her transition. More than four years later, she is still waiting for her first appointment. Echo, who is part of a potential legal challenge to England's NHS service over waiting times, said the delay left her drowning in gender dysphoria, the distress caused by someone's gender identity not matching their body. I feel like I'm in limbo. My life is on hold. I want to see if they've got averages here. Echo estimated she had to spend 30,000 pounds, approximately $40,000 on private doctors since she first went to her doctor in August of 2017. She's one of four people, two under 18, who were supported by legal advocacy groups considering legal action over wait times for a first consultation that can stretch between four and five years for, for adults. Adults waiting four to five years just to be seen by a doctor after you've already talked to your psycho psychiatrist and psych or psychologist just think about that that's a fast track in ollie london's mind just kidding ollie london isn't thinking about facts at all ollie london is just a liar who is telling you a fantastic story he made up in his head 
that uh, there's 50,000 detransitioners on a Reddit uh, subreddit forum uh, speaking about detransitioning, but they're scared to come out and talk about it because they're going to get attacked. So there's so, a lot of people hiding. You seem to be in denial, Ollie, that the vast, vast majority of these people, let's say there's a bias. Let's say instead of 1%, <laughs> it's 10% regret it. And that's a huge deviation. So I'm giving you a lot of doubt here. If 10% only uh, regret it, do you think that on whole of the 90% who don't regret it and who had what they consider life-changing uh, care, health care, True, Ace. Why Lysis. would you seek to deny them life-changing health care? When they, well, Ethan, they the yeah, they say, this saved my life. Well, oh, yeah. As a trans person, I'm just going to take this moment. As a trans person who's been through a lot, gender transition saved my life. I would not live my life any other way. Uh, there is no... There is nothing on earth that would force me back into the closet. Gender transition, the ability to change my body to the way that I want it to be was a life-saving endeavor for me, okay? It completely and utterly changed my life. Even considering all of the hell that I went through socially, from family rejection to uh, uh, people treating me like absolute shit uh, online and offline, even with the discrimination, even with the the familial uh, nonsense from my hyper my at the time hyper Christian family, thankfully some of my family has now left the cult. Um, still worth it. Wouldn't I still do not regret gender transition? I just want to make that clear. From me reacting to this conversation, I count myself among one of those. Ethan, a children can't get tattoos, children can't buy cigarettes or buy alcohol. So how on earth can they consent to doing something they don't even understand about? We have to look at many of these kids, they don't understand, they don't think about the future. Cigarettes and alcohol are dangerous and addictive substances. You're, to, you're comparing cigarettes and alcohol to fucking medical and mental health care, you fucking freak. Like, if a kid changes their body to have gender reassignment surgery or take hormones, they might not be able to have a baby when they're older. They don't think about those things because they're kids. So the issue is just we shouldn't be doing this to kids. It should happen. You know, as an adult, they can make informed consent. But even with... And remember, Ollie London doesn't actually support this for adults either because Ollie London lies about the wait times for adults too. So Ollie London is just a fucking liar. Some of the parents agree hey, to it. Hey, Ollie, do you, know, the... do you know how many kids between the age of 6 and 17 went through irreversible surgery in the United States? Um, I know the number rises every year. Now it will be okay. several thousand. So the number of patients, of children between 6 and 17, who went through irreversible surgery in the United States... Uh, what was the, year, uh, the years on that one? Uh, three years, 2019 through two, uh, 2021. So this is the most comprehensive data we have, and this comes straight from the uh, the government stats. It was 250 per year. Does that seem significant to you? So across three years, a grand total of 750 kids in the entirety of the U.S., young people were given gender-related surgeries. Now remember, I'm going to bring back a number from the beginning real quick. Okay, everybody, I told you to remember this number. Ready? According to the American Society of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgeons, in just 2020, nearly 230,000 cosmetic surgeries and nearly 140,000 non-invasive cosmetic procedures were performed on teens aged 13 to 19. Seven hundred and fifty total across three years uh, were minors whose dysphoria was severe enough to warrant surgery. 750. But every single year, 230,000 co cosmetic surgeries are done on teenagers. Interesting how it's only ever a problem when it's trans people. And when it's trans people, they want you to wait three years and have psychoanalysis and have invasive doctors poke and prod you and ask you questions and treat you like you're a crazy person. Isn't that fucking interesting? It's almost like 
all of the noise, all of the culture war is a bunch of bullshit. And what they actually really feel is they just hate trans people. They just don't like trans people and they don't want trans people to have good lives. Almost like that's all it boils down to. They want you to fucking die. Do you guys know, everybody in my community, what the fuck is rule number one? Does everybody remember what rule number one is? Do not fucking die. That is rule number one of the Demon Mama community. Do not fucking die. And the reason why that is rule number one of the Demon Mama community is specifically because in this particular moment, we live in a time in which an entire political wing has decided that their main goal is to do everything in their power to try and make trans people die and disappear. And so we say, do not fucking die. Uh, that's completely incorrect because there Based are there's what? a clinic in Oregon. It's it's in the thousands now. There's a clinic in Oregon that's done at least the thousands. Is that significant? A thousand? I mean, we have fifty no, million children in the United States. Do you think a thousand well, yeah. is, is statistically significant? There's thousands, and, and this study probably only takes into account people on Medicaid or Medicare. There are also the parents of patients that pay. Out True. Everyone is pointing out rule number two is always read with love. Honestly, we should just call it rule number two. We should just make a rule number two. I only, I originally, I wanted it to be just the one rule is, is the only really rule, but I guess it is fair for us to have a rule number two be always raid with love. We do say always raid with love and it's a pretty good rule. Maybe I should just call it rule number two, but then we need a rule number two command, whatever. We'll work it out. True. It's, it's a, it's a de facto rule. Yeah, they're both good rules, but rule number one is more important because I don't want you to die. Obviously, everyone dies eventually, but do not die is, ab is specifically about adopting a, uh, a position of defiance. It is, a, it is rule number one is about embracing liberation and a fight against the death that is constantly being pushed upon us. And I, I, I'm going to take a minute here from the react. This has been a really great react, but it's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on in this in this conversation, and I just want people to remember um, that the the people who are pushing this culture war against trans people, the people who are pushing this um, this 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 groomer panic, the reason why they jump to talking about groomers is because they want to have justification in dehumanizing you and justifying your death. They want to have excuses for why it's okay to hurt you. They want to have excuses for why it's okay to dehumanize you. And that is not an easy world to live in, okay? It is not, being trans or being gay is not an easy life, okay? And that doesn't mean that suffering is all that our life is about, because it's not. However, I think it's very important to remind people uh, to fight and, and, <sighs> It's especially hard right now to feel good about life. It's especially hard right now to uh, uh, to look out at the world and the atmosphere around trans people. If you're a trans person, no matter what social media you go on, no matter how uh, no matter how insulated you are from politics, no matter how much you avoid politics, if you're a trans person, you no no matter where you go, you will be bombarded with anti-trans messages. People don't understand how bad it is. If you're not trans, you can go out into the world and the chance of you engaging with something that is going to be uh, 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 undermining you as a person is very, very low. The likelihood that you're gonna log on to YouTube and watch a video that's like specifically targeting you and saying that you're a problem and that you're a part of like a, a, a civilization destroying nemesis, uh, you, you, it's not likely to happen. Um, but if you're trans, you see that every day. You see, you see it even if you try to avoid it. It is a very difficult time right now to be trans. It is a very difficult time right now to be gay. Um, not that it's ever been super easy, but, uh, adopting a position 
of of defiance against that type of thing is very important. It's very important, okay? We cover it a lot on this stream because I, for some reason, have decided that uh, that part of what I want to do with my platform, with my ability to entertain, is mock and debunk anti-trans people. I want to provide, I want to use my voice to push back against this stuff because that's what I can do. I am a, 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 a filmy talker, okay? I like to set up my camera. I like to talk about stuff. Uh, so that's what I do. But uh, it's not just in this space that these messages are getting out. It's not just in these spaces that this hateful uh, 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 nonsense is dumping out and it's ruining people's lives. It is very difficult to, to, to have to bear the burden of knowing that even a, even if those people are a minority, and it's true, transphobes are a minority. People who hate trans people do not represent a majority faction in any way, shape, or form. They aren't the majority, but they're really loud and they're horrible and they're there are an unfortunate amount of them with an unfortunate amount of reach. They're blasting this message from all over the place and it's hard to deal with. It's Nobody should have to deal with it, that type of shit. So I'm rambling here, but the point that I'm trying to say is uh, this culture war shit takes a toll on people and it's very easy to, to start to lose focus on uh, on why you're going on at all when there's so much, so much hatred being shoveled out on top of you. And I just wanna remind people, it's worth it to keep going. Life is worth living and these people are not going to win. They can't win. Even when they're winning in their mind, they are still losing because they can't actually control anything at all. They only have a paranoia that they chase endlessly. They chase it endlessly and the harder they squeeze, the harder it is for them to control. The more people defy them, the more sand slips through their fingers. And just remember that and do not fucking die. All right. All right. Let's get back to the react now. Let's get back to the react. I just wanted to make sure I said that. This shit gets me going. Oh my God. Out of pocket. So Even if it's I think thousands, study was, Ollie, let's say it's thousands. When, when, is this significantly uh, significant when we have 51 million children in the United States between ages 6 and 17? It's significant even because it's growing every day. If you look at any chart or graph of um, kids being medically transitioned, it's now in the tens of thousands across the U.S. Uh, California has uh, thousands alone. Um, Florida, um, before Governor DeSantis banned, there's, there's a clinic, uh, Dr. Gallagher, who performs at least uh, five surgery uh, five surgeries on minors every month? Um, so you know that's just one clinic. Can you so cite those, it's in the uh, numbers. Uh, is it possible to get a reference? Um, Dr. Gallagher is a clinic in um, Florida, and she operates on minors. Okay. And so, what is wrong with the number okay. going up? I mean, let's say it goes you up. You have a clinic that has done surgeries on minors. Uh, okay, that wasn't even. Ollie didn't even finish the point there. A thousand to two thousand in the whole United States. I mean, so so obviously so, one would mm -hmm. assume, right, Ollie, as people become more educated and aware of transgenderism, and we've seen the same thing with uh, homosexuality, which of course you are you are a member of the LGBT community. You know, um, in the fifties, as being uh, gay became more acceptable, you saw the numbers significantly rising during that time. I'm sure you know that, right? Yeah, of course, because so what's it the became difference? more acceptable. What is the difference between the hysteria that took place then about there was, you know, uh, on the right that they're turning our kids gay? That turned out not to be true. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good, good, absolutely good. So hold on to that. So now today we see the same This is graph. so good. This is so strong from Ethan right here. I actually love this. Pushing Ollie on this point is really strong. Half going up of trans kids getting surgery or gender affirming care or whatever. So why is it that you today can draw a conclusion that was the same conclusion in the 50s that you disagree with, that trans kids are being influenced societal to become trans? It seems to be a glaring contradiction in logic. 
it, you know, it's not just random based on the fact that people, it's easier for people to come out these days or identify in different ways. It is a concerted push, Ethan. So there's now That's over 60... That's what they said 60, about gay people. Uh, Ethan, there's now over 60 pediatric gender clinics that have opened <laughs> within the last 15 years across the US. They weren't there. 60 whole clinics across the entire United States. Does Ollie London forget how big the United States is? There are 50 states and there are only 60 clinics. And some of those states are larger than multiple of Ollie London's home country. Ollie London is so bad at fear mongering on this platform, it's not even funny. Before, so they are profiting from this. They're opening clinics because they know they can profit. <laughs> So when they push, you know, through popular culture or, or push transitioning via TikTok trends, uh, they are profiting from that. So they, who's they, who's they that's pushing transitioning via TikTok trends? Hmm? Who are you talking about? Who has secret control over the TikTok trends? Oh my God, this is so sus it benefits them if society and children are being confused and indoctrinated in schools or via social media because they, they can get thought, more patients through so, their but, door. So that's good, but let's focus on this, this issue that I want to nail down. They said that gay kids were being influenced to be gay. You disagree with that now. And you're one of the people that says kids are being influenced to become trans and it's the same curve. Why is that curve? Not just the, result of it becoming more acceptable uh, in society. Is this the same um, curve, the, right? The, same curve. Uh, it, it's a huge curve, you know, and it's really in the last five years since um, TikTok came about, we're seeing so many, there's there's about well, 2.2 well, billion people. What, what, what does it matter how they become aware of it? I'm <sighs> telling you, it's the same curve. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are influences now that didn't exist 10 years like ago what? that are pushing kids. For instance, TikTok, there's so TikTok, about 2.2. So oh TikTok my. is turning people- TikTok is TikTok is turning people trans. People trans, where back in the 50s, people said it was like rock and roll music. It was movies, <laughs> it was hippie movements. Yeah, uh, that wasn't accessible. Goddamn Elvis, that guy with his hip thrusting and his dancing and his, his hound dog and his thrusting and, and his dancing and his fancy sequined outfits. He's turning all the kids gay. Jesus Christ. Well, to the generation before them, I don't see the difference. What I'm saying is that kids are being exposed to influences that they didn't have before. Same you know, the kids are being... Yeah, like you, Ollie London, kids are being exposed to serial liars like you. Kids are being exposed to all kinds of stuff, including gigantic lying pieces of shit like you and your disgusting cohort. You and all of the other people on the right wing who push this fucking disinformation. The same in the 50s. The kids who were coming out as gay were also exposed to things that weren't accessible to generations before them. Well, I don't, don't agree with that. They didn't have phones nope. back then. Kids are now being pushed trends <laughs> and the AI algorithm recognizes oh. the kids' vulnerabilities. Well, make music, push videos. music, uh, you know, popular music. Uh, yeah, music. Pop music is, well, pop mm -hmm. music was something that was, rock and roll was something that was new back then. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, correct. Radio, and, and you could also argue that um, in the 80s, more people came out because, uh, you know, music like George Michael was, um, you know, and, and songs about freedom so and stuff. So then why are you concluding with... that TikTok is making people trans? I don't understand the logic. You just contradicted yourself. No, no. What I'm saying is in the last five years, there is an increase in gender clinics opening because they are exploiting um, these children that are being pushed trends. You know, there's a lot of lobby groups, Ethan, the human rights campaign. What the fuck are you talking about? This is you're making up a fiction. They opened up gender clinics to take advantage of kids because they were secretly advertising gender transition via TikTok trends, and they opened up clinics to take advantage. It's this is insanity. This is nonsense. Nonsense and derangement. You again. I've said this a hundred times. I'll say it again. If conservatives just believed in orcs and goblins. If they actually were just like the orcs and the goblins, the goblins and orcs are coming for you. The TikToks, the TikTok is being controlled by the grand goblin wizard. He uses his crystal ball to, to convert children into new goblins. The world would be a better place. If they were just at if the exact same level of fantastical thinking, 
if they just stopped obsessing over trans people and instead just fucking talked about ghosts and ghouls and and zombies and uh, goblins, the world would be a better place. Sorry. It's a massive lobby group. They're going around. Ali, you were trans push, before um, TikTok. Um, I've struggled with gender dysphoria for all of my before life. Before TikTok. Correct, but yes, but my um, identity struggles came about because I was using social media too much. And, you but know, Ali, you were see... born in 1990. You're not that much younger than me. When I grew up, there was no social media. I don't believe you probably had social media until you were in your 20s, well into your 20s. Yeah, correct. And the reason I struggled with my identity mm. was because of a bullying in childhood. But then... I only transitioned as an but adult. But bullying in childhood, we, we established from the report that you told me to read that bullying in childhood results in less people True. transitioning. <laughs> Sorry, say it again. This, the study you sent me yeah, about the bullying, study. the conclusion was that bullying results in less people transitioning. So you says it's a result of social media. Well, you didn't have social media. Then I'm, you says it was a result of bullying. Person. But this study you told me to read says bullying reduces the uh, amount of people who who transition. So how is it that you were trans before what, outside of all of these uh, influences that are turning people uh, trans? Well, firstly, I'm I'm an individual, so I'm one person. So my experience is not reflective okay. of every single person that becomes trans out and? there. But the, the thing is, I became trans as an adult because I really struggled with my identity throughout my whole life. And yes, I did get bullying. Every case is different as well. Some Remember, when Ollie London says I struggled with my identity, Ollie London isn't just talking about being trans. Ollie London is talking about how how he literally sometimes forgets that he's not Jimin from BTS. He is a uh, Jimin from BTS is a real art artist who actually exists. Ollie London got surgeries to look more like Jimin and sometimes refers in the first person to himself doing things that Jimin did. So that's what Ollie London is actually talking about when Ollie London is talking about identity confusion. Uh, newsflash, trans people don't have the type of identity problems that Ollie London has. I'm sure some of them do. Obviously, Ollie London exists, but... The average trans person does not have that type of identity problem. They're not having an identity problem. Trans people know who they are. They want to change their body to fit who they are. It's fairly simple. People are bullied because of their gender identity. Some people are not. Um, so every single case is different, but the reason I became trans was, you know, you, you know, you follow my journey, the Korean stuff. That was me trying to find myself and trying to, you know, fit in because I hated the way I looked. If, you're, and then, if your journey is a personal one, which I totally understand, then what gives you the right to project question, your Ethan. personal experience good onto questions. others? Oh, I speak to what the What does, exactly, what does give you the right to project onto others? And the answer is conservatives who are giving Ollie London a platform because Ollie London is willing to recite uh, horrifically anti-trans messaging for money. Positioners every day, I speak to parents, I speak to women. So and don't they you, are that, that assumes a bias, Ollie. You're talking all day to detransitioners. We've also established, because we, I think, like studies, or I don't know if we decided, I think you said you like studies, because <laughs> 27 of them, made a consensus that 99% of people that transition don't regret it. So if you spend all day talking to the 1% that do regret it, don't you believe that underlies a bias? Well, no, I don't believe it because I talk, I talk to all sorts of people. I talk no, it's not a bias. I have no bias. Oh my God. This is such an expose. It's such a fucking, you are so exposed. This is absolutely, you are obliterated. The clothes of the, uh, the, the fucking curtains have been blown open and the Wizard of Oz is nowhere to be found. Ollie London is completely and utterly exposed. Parents that have trans kids and, you know, they're trying Holy to navigate shit. through that. And the general consensus with everyone I speak to, because, no, I don't, I'm not right wing or left wing. I'm just very much in the center. I'm just trying to help people using my platform to try and help people. You know, the general consensus is 
we shouldn't be doing this for kids. And there generally is a concerted push over the last five years to medically transition children. If kids want to experiment, if a girl wants to be a tomboy, you know, nobody has a problem with that. You know, if they want to become trans... Ollie London, you just talked about right now, in this literally within minutes, you talked about, Ollie London just talked about how he was bullied ruthlessly for being effeminate as a child. And now in the... Just moments later, Ollie London is trying to say no one has a problem with children experimenting with their identity. Who the fuck do you think is bullying people because they're too effeminate or too masculine as a kid? Fucking conservatives have a problem with that. They always have. The tomboys and tom girls have never been treated well historically, okay? There's a huge fucking problem with that. You even admitted it. Jesus fucking Christ. Kansas and adults, that's on them. But the issue that I talk about every day, I talk with parents, I talk with all these detransitions, is when this happens to kids. That's the issue I'm speaking about. Right, it's but that's not so about rare. people being trans. Let me ask you another question, just to pivot a little bit. I'm one of the people that would say, Ollie London is willing to do anything for attention. You have probably some kind of, I don't want to diagnose you, I'm not a psychiatrist, but there is some craving for attention, clearly, right? Good or bad. You said your pronouns were core, Ian, you know, you said you were going to get a, your penis uh, size reduced. So that you could look more, uh, you could be a more th authentic Korean. I mean, these are not serious things. You seem to be a provocateur. Is it possible that you are participating in this right-wing grift because one, it's making you a lot of money, and two, it's getting you a lot of attention? Is that possible that you actually don't care and that your your beliefs are empty? Is that possible? No, absolutely not. So when I struggle with my identity <laughs> for years, I... yeah, of course not. Yeah, of course. No, 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 no. That's I, I love, I actually think that was a, that is what I like to call a dirty tactic, okay? What Ethan just did there is a dirty debate tactic. It's a dirty rhetorical tra uh, uh, trap. No matter what Ollie London says after that, Ethan has already set up a characterization. This is called poisoning the well. No answer there is going to look good. Um, but... I, I have to say, I think it's very effective here because this entire conversation, we've already seen Ollie London lying about everything else. So what Ethan has done, while that is indeed generally considered to be a dirty tactic, Ethan has already gotten Ollie London to acknowledge uh, that he is lying about everything else. He's lied so much in this conversation. So at this point, pulling this tactic basically just means that Ethan gets to make a declaration on who Ollie London is, but he can frame it as a question. And because everyone has already seen Ollie London lying about everything else, Ethan comes out on top no matter what Ollie London says here. It's a really good move. It is a little bit. It is a little bit of a sneaky debate tactic, but it's a really good move. I generally was struggling, and I was lashing out at bullies. And the more the more I would get bullied online by YouTubers and people on TikTok, the more I would act crazy because I was trying to feel validated and loved. And you know, it was very well, the unhealthy. Con the conservative movement that. has offered you quite a uh, quite an open hand. Uh, they're very glad to be using you as a mouthpiece against trans people. So it must feel good to be being accepted from somebody, even if it is uh, at the detriment of many people who are at risk, trans people. It must feel nice no, to have people supporting you. No, it's nothing to do with that at all. You know, I, I could have easily continued doing K-pop. I could have focused on TikTok, which, you know, I used to really enjoy doing TikTok. I'm not the best singer. I like to make fun, entertaining videos. You know, I could have stuck with that. Yeah, In actual totally. fact, when I did yeah. transition, I lost so many brand deals. I lost no, I lost all my invites to New York. Back Do you think maybe the reason why people stopped wanting to engage with you after you detransitioned is because you immediately transitioned into being an insanely hateful person who says horrible shit and accuses people of being pedophiles without evidence? Maybe that's the reason that you lost your 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 special little brand deals. Maybe it's because you started acting like a giant bigoted piece of shit. Hmm.
Sebastian Rico was front row. Every yeah, but now you're I on Tucker Carlson. Right. I mean, that's the biggest show in the world, or it was. Rest in peace to the GOAT. Yeah, he was the original GOAT. But no, it's, it's um, nothing let, to so, do with let, that. No. So you say it's not possible <laughs> that you are just doing this for attention. If we go back, here's a recording of you saying that you're using the BLM movement for attention and for cameos. Here, listen. Oh, shit. So it's basically every time I do a music video, it's like... If it's a million, it's a thousand pounds. So, you know, if I just keep releasing music videos, that's like enough. And then also because I've been a lot on Twitter, there's been so many people talking about me on Twitter because I'm supporting the Black Lives Matter and protests and stuff. So I had 200,000 views on the video. So because of that as well, I'm getting a lot of requests. So it's just, you know, I'm just staying relevant uh, in the news, on TV and stuff, because, you know, the more exposure I have, you know, if I'm trending on Twitter or whatever, on TV, then the more cameos I get. So, yeah, I'm just... So here you say you're supporting BLM to stay relevant and because... Oof! It... That's a spicy clip to have on hand there! Oh, props to Ethan's team! Props to the H3H3 team for having that clip on hand. That is a brutal clip to be able to play. Oof! Gets you more... This is why receipts are excellent. Always have the receipts. Oof. Cameos. Have you been getting well, more firstly, cameos uh, since you went uh, right wing? Well, firstly, that audio was from a number of years ago. It was edited mm. deceptively by oh, yeah? somebody that was completely uncredible um, and just oh, yeah? basically desperate for attention. It's your voice, correct? It's my voice, but it was edited deceptively to try to make it? me was, look was, bad. So what's the deception? So I'm not doing any of this. What I'm doing now is to try and help people. You know, previously- uh, uh, Okay, what, Ethan asks what was edited to make it deceptive. And Ollie goes, well, I'm, I'm, I, uh, uh, I'm not doing it. I'm not dishonest. I'm not dishonest, I swear to God. Holy shit. Ollie London is getting fucking bodied. And I'll admit What's it, the deception, I had some very me it's behavior. deceptive. I'm open to hearing you out. How is it deceptive? I'm, I'm explaining. So, you know, okay. previously I had unhealthy behavior where I was generally like thinking, oh, how many likes can I get? How many views can I get? Because I was in a really crazy mental health place. And, you know, I, the more surgery I would get, I would feel worse about myself. So I would try and be validated by online views and things. But in fact, you know, Unlike talking now. to BLM actually... No, no, I'm not doing it now. If I right. wanted to... <laughs> Ethan, Which is if why I wanted to... Show. Oh, my God. Oh my god. No, if I That's wanted to get attention and stuff, yeah. I would stick to doing TikToks, I would stick to doing my K-pop music well, you're videos. You're getting a lot more attention right now. I mean, Still getting... no answer about how it was deceptively edited, just, just insisting I'm not dishonest and I'm definitely not doing it for attention now. I, 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 it's the new me. I'm the new me. That was the old me. A lot of attention right now. In fact, you wrote a whole damn book about it. Gender Madness. Well, what I'm doing now is because I've actually come to a realization that I have had some very unhealthy behaviors in the past and I'm trying to remedy that, you know, because I can't remedy sleep, that but... by attacking trans people and by going to every single right wing platform you possibly can and propagating an anti trans message in the middle of a trans genocide. Incredible. You fucking disgusting grifter piece of shit. Fuck Ollie London and huge props to Ethan for putting Ollie London on the spot. Night when I think, you know, have I done something bad? Have I been a bad influence? So I'm actually trying to remedy that and devote my well, time I hate to, to tell you, if that's what you're concerned about, you're going to be feel really bad when your next phase comes around and you realize it's that you were the, phase, mouth, Ethan, the it's, mouthpiece it's, for uh, really hateful people. Ethan, it's not a phase and I'm not a mouthpiece for anyone. I'm literally just trying to speak up about issues that I have finally woken up to see what's going on in the it world. It seems to me, thinking, Ollie, that if we look at all of your different iterations of your personality, the one consistent thing is a need for attention. Well, you could say that about Trisha Paytas, who was your best friend and you used to do a podcast. Oh, I do say that. I mean, yeah, I would say that about Trisha Paytas. Sure. Are you like she Trisha had different Paytas? Identities, but but she, she had a wake up call and then she realized that, you know, she could be an influence to others. And she's really a positive gal. She's doing amazing things at the moment. And, you know, I had a wake Trisha up call. Trisha was a well chicken I was... nugget, I believe. Uh, do, you, do you empathize with that, Ollie, as a former trans well, person? I... Ethan, I'm vegetarian, so I wouldn't empathize with her bigger. So you're, so you're saying you're nugget. like, uh, yeah, and congratulations on that. We support that. Ollie, do you, do you believe you're like Trisha Paytas? No, not at all. I'm not comparing myself oh, okay. to her. I'm just saying that well, you just, she had a lot of ideas. Ollie London literally did, Ollie just compared himself 
to Trisha Paytas and then just said right now, I'm not comparing myself to Trisha Paytas after comparing himself to Trisha Paytas. Brain soup. Absolute and utter brain soup. And I feel like I need to bring the clock back, the dementia clock, because as this goes on, Ollie London is getting more and more incoherent and nonsensical, literally contradicting himself within a single sentence. She struggles. She had some unhealthy behaviors. I had some unhealthy behaviors. I struggled, but I'm remedying that now. I'm working hard every like day Trisha. to try and be a better person, to try and help people. And that's what I'm focused on. So people Good. can call me what they want. I'm not a mouthpiece for anyone. I'm literally trying to help. Okay, make let's the pivot. World a better place. Let's pivot. This came about when you found God, right? You, uh, and you can fill in the blanks here. You were confused. You were a transgender woman. You were selling uh, kids lunch boxes depicting a trans woman on it. That's pretty low by your own definition. And then you were walking around and you found God. You entered a church and then you realized, hey, this is a cool vibe, maybe. Well, no, actually, before that, I was started to go to therapy. So basically, I lost a lot of my friends. People thought I was really like crazy. And I was, I was very mentally unwell with all of these different crazy identities that I struggled with. So I actually started therapy first um, and I started going to sessions twice a week. And then they actually told me, you know, you need to speak about this. You need to find a community that. So uh, Ada Stardust says, oh my God, not the Jesus freak grift. Okay, you guys need to understand, okay? I was actually talking with my partner, Doe, Doe, we love Doe. Everybody loves Doe. I was talking to um, I was talking to my partner Doe about this earlier. Um, Christianity, the Christian nationalist movement, is in my opinion the only future uh, for the right in America. Um, I don't think that the right has any other options. Um, part of that is because uh, obviously they hate everything. Um, conservatives are angry about Disney. They're angry about literally everything. They hate, everything is woke. They hate M&Ms, they hate everything. They have nothing else to latch on except the Bible. See, the Bible and the Christian nationalist movement um, provides them this incredible justification for their bigotry. We're doing it in the name of God. God told me that we need to save America in the name of God. Now, for a couple of years, um, the predominant online, on the internet, mind you, not in the real world, but on the internet, the atheism movement had a lot of success in basically making Jesus shit really cringy on the internet. But let me tell you, that is not the case anymore, okay? There are enormous uh, hyper-Christian, hyper-fundamentalist sects uh, all over the internet now. The Jesus freak stuff is like, uh, people are, are able to, to grift. I mean, even Dave Rubin reconverted to Christianity. You guys remember when that happened? Remember when Dave Rubin was like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an atheist and I, I like to question everything. And then Dave Rubin was like, actually, I believe in God now. They're all the conservatives are converting, converting to Christ. In fact, we talked about this. Uh, remember just like a few weeks ago, we covered, uh, the quartering having a meltdown on a bunch of other conservatives because he said he was like, the Jesus stuff is fucking bullshit. I can't handle all this crazy Jesus crap. You guys are a bunch of hypocrites and I don't fucking buy it. You guys remember that shit? I had a literal video up. It's about uh, the quartering freaking out and calling all of the Christian, Christian conservatives hypocrites. He doesn't like it, but the fact that the quartering is being roasted so much on the lines of Christianity is just showing to you how much the far right is pivoting to Christianity. So it makes absolute sense to me that Ollie London is a born again, oh, I found God. I'm still super gay though. <laughs> like, you know, Milo, remember Milo did that too? He's now the, the trad cath ex-gay. Yeah, the uh, the um, the Christian nationalist movement is, in my opinion, the future of the far right, and we need to be aware of that because uh, all of the stuff, all of the arguments and conversations that happened during the internet atheist era, which failed to stick, mind you, uh, are going to become relevant again. 
but this time we need to make sure that they stick. We need to be able to fight against fundamentalist Christian uh, Christianity because Christian nationalism and fundamentalist Christianity uh, purports a worldview that is literal night a literal nightmare of torture for the vast majority of the world. Okay, uh, Christianity and the rule of Christianity on the globe has been a ongoing dark age for our entire planet. Okay. I, I don't hate all Christians. I think there are some really wonderful Christians out there, but Christian fundamentalism is a psychotic, uh, inherently domineering uh, a, a, a religion that is forcible. It believes in slavery. It justifies and believes in slavery. It justifies and believes in the, the killing of gay people, the killing of trans people, the subjugation of women. Uh, we have to be ready to push back against this shit. And by the way, it's no surprise that in this conversation, all, all centered around uh, anti anti trans uh, bigotry, that the uh, the central character Ollie London is a born again Christian uh, uh, preaching the gospel of God against the gays and the queers. No surprise there, huh? Louis Boy says, Vosh says that Christianity is fundamentally homophobic. Is that true? I do not believe that that is true. Um, there are, uh, there are um, homophobic verses in the Bible. However, uh, there are numerous theological interpretations. However, what I will say is that uh, Christianity is fundamentally vulnerable to homophobia. Um, it is not actually fundamentally homophobic. Um, and in fact, uh, like I said, serious theologians have discussed the anti-gay verses in the Bible, most of which come, all of which come from the Old Testament, um, which I don't know if you guys know this, the reason that it's called the Old Testament is because Jesus created the New Testament. So the Old Testament laws are not for the born again Christian. Uh, the born again Christian is according to the Bible, supposed to learn from the past, but not literally live by the Levitical laws that weren't intended for them. They're by their own religion, supposed to live by the New Testament. Um, so, while I, uh, this is not true, they do not all come from the Old Testament. You might be right. I, I, I might be, uh, there might be one or two verses in the New Testament, but uh, I, I could be wrong about this. My apologies if I'm, if I'm forgetting a New Testament quote. If somebody has a New Testament uh, verse that I'm forgetting, please hit me with it. I was pretty sure that the main verses that people reference is, are from the Old Testament. Regardless, um, Serious theologians will argue uh, that uh, that that though even the homophobic verses in the Old Testament were not designed to actually be anti-gay. They were supposed to talk. Uh, they were supposed to be illustrating the position of a man. This is really complicated. No, I don't believe that the Bible that Christianity is fundamentally homophobic. However, I do believe that Christianity is highly susceptible to homophobia. Oh, true, true, okay, true, sorry. I should have mentioned, yes, Paul does have, actually, I do believe you're right, yes. I stand corrected. There is writings from Paul, and Yes, Paul does have weird issues with sex. I completely blanked on that. I am incorrect on that particular one. Regardless, that's not the subject of this video. The point is, I don't believe that Christianity is fundamentally homophobic. However, I do believe that Christianity is highly vulnerable to it. And I do believe that Christian fundamentalism is fundamentally homophobic. Um, but fundamentalism is a certain sect of Christianity. There are many interpretations of Christianity. Anyway, let's continue this video. I just wanted to make a point about Christianity. So, um, 
Rock says, Demon Mama, I still identify as a Christian, but I went through a deconstruction reconstruction phase recently. And to be honest, I feel like most people on the left lived in, live in a more Christ-like way than most Christians. I agree with you. Uh, I am not a Christian. I used to be a Christian. I grew up in a fundamentalist cult and I was Christian until about the age of 18 when I deconverted. Uh, and since then I have done an incredible amount of uh, writing, uh, meditation, uh, reflection on the fa on my history with Christianity and uh, my thoughts about my, my general beliefs since then. And I do agree that I do think that uh, leftist, uh, specifically serious communists, people who are very serious, not about communism as a governmental form, but about communism as a way of life, living together, sharing with others. I do believe those people are more accurate to the life of Christ than, than most professing Christians. Most professing Christians live identically to, uh, to capitalists. They do not actually live or attempt to shape their life to the life of Christ at all, despite the fact that they are explicitly called by their holy text to do so. Um, it's a long conversation and I will be talking about it more in the future. Um, yeah. When will you do your spiritual deconstruction again? I want to be there when you do it soon. My old spiritual deconstruction is visible. You guys can see it. Uh, actually, if you, um, it's, it's literally right over there. Somebody just posted it. You guys can grab it from chat right there. Boop, 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 boop. Go check out, just search Demon Mama Spiritual Deconstruction. It's my old video, the production value is much lower, but I talk about my history with the church. I talk about my experiences growing up super, super Christian. And uh, it's a very big project. I am working on the Spiritual Deconstruction 2, uh, which when you watch the first one, you will see me mention that I intend to do my spiritual, I intend to go through the spiritual deconstruction process multiple times throughout my life with my new thoughts and, and, uh, and as I gain more skills for video making and as I gain more skills generally and more experience in life. So I don't know exactly when I'll be done. I'm putting a lot of thought into it, but it will be soon TM. Anyway, let's, uh, let's continue. By the way, if you've been enjoying this very, very uh, react-filled react, -filled react I as you can see, Demon Mama adds a lot of content to anything that I react to. If you've been enjoying it, please make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Press the subscribe button down below. Press uh, the like button. The like buttons are, the likes are deeply appreciated. They really help the channel. And I would love to have you come back and check out my other stuff. So press those buttons down below. We're gonna get right back into the react. Uh, as you guys can tell, I like to add a lot to the things that I react to, uh, use them as a jumping point for further conversation. And I always will be like that. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, accepting, non-judgmental and kind. So hold so on. Your, your, I, your therapist told you that you're not trans? No, my therapist didn't tell me I wasn't trans, but they said if I'm having issues and struggling with who I am, perhaps I should uh, find a community that's very okay. welcoming and might make me feel like I can belong, okay. you know, take some time off social media. Okay. Um, so they didn't tell me not to be trans. It's nothing, nothing to do with that. So they you, literally told me to try and find myself. So you took a break off social media and then you took your, well, no, you I, took the found, your time to find God and uh, find your new self. I stopped, you know, I stopped, um, spending hours and hours a day on TikTok, um, and talk. YouTube, which was, you know, messing up my mind. And I actually left my <laughs> phone at home. I would go to therapy <laughs> sessions and then I started Excuse going me, to sorry. church and made, it made me realize, you know, there's more to life than just being online or, or, or whatever, you know, I need to actually make a difference in this world. And I've spoken to so many people that are concerned at the direction the world's going in. And, you know, if I can try and help um, parents and help, you know, women and stuff and speak up for people, then, you know, I can um, feel good. I want to show you this clip from an interview from Piers Morgan, okay? B. Sadu says, so Ollie London touched Christian grass? Um, yeah, okay, guys, uh, again, I know we're immediately jumping back into commentary again, but I just want to, oh, that's, that's why I'm here, but, and specifically about Christianity, but yes, actually, unironically, though, um, YouTube, I am a YouTuber, okay? 
I make YouTube videos for a living. I do long streams that people like to listen to while they're doing other things, while they're working, while they're playing video games, whatever. I am a YouTuber. And let me tell you, YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram are not a replacement for an actual social existence. In fact, they're a poor replacement. They don't even come close to doing the real job. This is part of the reason why I think that the the fundamentalist Christians are going to have an advantage in the coming years in recruiting far writers to their side because they offer uh, they offer something other than social media. Social media is, pardon me using some spiritual language, but soulless. Uh, social media is a wasteland, and the only reason that everybody clings to social media so much is because the rest of our social lives have been completely and utterly devastated by the ravages of late capitalism and a pandemic. People don't have uh, social engagements the way that they used to. People rely on social media and have relied on social media, and that doesn't make people bad for doing that. They're not. It's just all that we have. Um, but it's a piss poor replacement for actual social connections. This is one of the reasons why with my platform constantly, I constantly encourage people to reach beyond the internet, to uh, use uh, use social media as a springboard to make real connections, to actually connect with people, to make real friends, to connect with them in the real world, um, and to build long lasting connections with those people. Um, because the, the internet leaves people feeling empty. The internet cannot give you a sense of meaning. It isn't, it's meant to sell you products. And products, as we all know, consumerism has never been fulfilling. It will never be fulfilling. It doesn't fulfill people. It leaves people feeling empty and like they are on a treadmill because they are. Consumerism is a treadmill of always having to get the next new thing, but that's not sustainable. And this is the danger uh, of, of Christian nationalism because it offers a sense of meaning to people, a heinous sense of meaning, a sense of meaning that teaches you that you should judge, that you need to build the kingdom of heaven and crush all other things that do not align with your interpretation of the will of God. And we have to be cautious and serious about that. It's one of the reasons why I take the time to talk about Christianity in this way. And I also encourage people to all of my viewers, I have 500 viewers right now. Those of you who are watching, I encourage you to start building connections, reaching out and, and connecting with others, building networks of people, scooping the people up who might otherwise be lost and pulled into these horrible manipulative structures. Um, the internet is, a, is the ultimate escape in a lot of ways. Our lives are painful. Our social lives are more fraught than ever before. Through at any point in, in recent history, has there ever been such a devastation of social connections? Uh, people literally can't hang out with each other or haven't been able to for years because of the pandemic and the pandemic restrictions. The pandemic is obviously uh, officially over, but of course, tons of people are still getting sick. People still have to be very cautious and are paying the price for not being cautious. Um, and of course, already we live in a, in a, we live in a, uh, a world in which you are encouraged to constantly disrupt your social groups. It is more common than ever for jobs to offer you, to fly you to somewhere that you're not from, to uh, land you and so that in a place and set you up in a place where, and demand all your time so that your only friends are also your coworkers. Your, your social life becomes dependent on the job. Um, but jobs and consumerism and social media are not a replacement for actual social connections, for people being able to be there when you're hurting, for people being able to help you move some stuff around your house, real people that you know, uh, that you're connected to and can share a meal with. And we need to be aware of that. And I encourage people to embrace a life beyond the net, because unfortunately the internet, especially in its current form, Interestingly, actually, just to drive this home, I want to point out the fact that the internet 
used to be a lot better at fostering long-term connections, but now more and more, everything is driven around algorithm content serving. It's not actually, even social media is not actually about actually connecting you with people. It's about plugging you into influencers who can advertise products for you, who can serve content to you. Uh, gone are the days of forum friends and discord groups where you make friends to play video games with, who you end up learning about their lives and they learn about your lives and you meet each other in person and you become real friends and you go on adventures together. More and more that is getting disrupted by the day in service of a never ending flow of advertisement product advertisement product it's something to keep in mind is all i'm saying okay that's all i'm it's what i'm saying and we need to be careful about the allure of the christian fundamentalist movement because people like ollie london and all these other people are pushing this shit like crazy Proving Beetle says, I really want to see a post-capitalist anarchist world in my lifetime where people are truly free and, and happy. The motive for profit is such a wasteful and soul-draining process. I don't know if we will ever see a post-capitalist anarchist world in our lifetimes, but what we can do is we can start to live our lives in post-capitalist ways. We can resist intentionally together the flows of capital. We can choose to live our lives in ways that are contrary to the never-ending need to consume. It's hard, but it's worth it. Let's continue. Lots of pictures here of, of you as a, as a yes, woman. So how, how long ago different. was that? Was that quite recently? That was actually at London Fashion Week. So that was literally a month ago. So kind of a drastic change. So you went from a month, you went from trans woman at Fashion Week, a month later, to being on Pierce Morgan denouncing the trans movement. Huh. Uh, when you said get off, uh, huh? take your time and talk nice and figure out who you are, you, that all happened within a month. No, actually, since I uh, originally transitioned, I felt great for a couple of months, and then I really started to question it. I started to think, okay, I can even do grift, more surgery grift, to grift, grift, make grift. myself physically become a transgender woman, or I can take a step back. So I was having a lot of thoughts of regret, but it was too late at that point. I'd already done facial feminization. I'd already changed myself. I was very confused. So I'd been having those thoughts for a number of months. And then within a month from the, um, that I particular see. picture being taken, I, I actually detransitioned. So tell mm -hmm. me about finding God. Tell me about when you were in the church and you had like an awakening. Well, I would lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of loved ones because uh, they thought my behavior was very unhealthy. And, um, you know, it was a, a now or never moment. I could have continued down a very destructive path, destructive for myself and people around me. And Destructive yes, as as Fafella points out, that surgery, that facial surgery, was to look more like Jimin. That wasn't just gender surgery. That was a Jiminization surgery. I'm a little lost. What is Ollie trying to say? Uh, Ollie is floundering desperately because he's realized he's been completely and utterly exposed, and so now he's just trying to waste time while saving face. But unfortunately, Ethan has him dead to rights. You know, people that see me online, it's I, I think I was, you know, not a good role model. And I John Fallon says, speaking of Christian nationalism, I currently don't have a social circle and everyone I know keeps telling me to fix it by joining a church. See what I mean? This that that that's one of the areas where the far right has something figured out. They know that people, humans being social creatures, even those of us who like our privacy, even those of us who need our time alone are still social creatures. That's why they push churches. That's why they push these entangling things. Be careful around churches. Not all churches are terrible, but a lot of churches have, even if they're not openly fundamentalist, a lot of them have fundamentalist messages and a lot of them are very political. Um, I encourage you to seek out other types of socializing not just online. There are all kinds of different things you can get involved with. Might I recommend, if you are looking for a 
way to do good. If you want to participate in things like charity and feel better about the world, look for local mutual aid groups. Almost every major city in America and a lot of small cities have local mutual aid groups that are open to accepting new members. Seriously, just search it. Search your area and mutual aid groups. Those are a non-Christian, non-religious uh, 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 social group that get together to help people meet their needs. They often do gardening. They often do food deliveries. They often help transport people to medical appointments. And you're going to meet a ton of really cool people along the way. So keep that in mind. There's just an option for, oh yeah, another example. Discordant Vol says, look up a local Food Not Bombs. Food Not Bombs is a perfect example of that. Food Not Bombs is a, a organization that it specifically aims to engage in mutual aid and provide social connections for people. An excellent, excellent example. Perfect example. Louis Boy says, oh yeah, Demon Mama, I've used your advice and I've made some LGBTQ friends from my local LGBTQ group. I still struggle to hang out with them, but nevertheless, I feel way better with them than without them. There you go. M meeting new people will not solve all social anxiety or anything like that, but I promise you, you will feel better knowing you're not alone. And so will everyone else. It's a mutual process. I deeply regret that. So, were you trying um, to be a role model? A... I find that interesting. No, I, 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 well, at the time in my delusion, I thought I was a role model for people that liked K-pop and wanted to be um, a K-pop star. Size. But so then I started going to church to try and uh, take some time out to think about my life and think, you know, what is the next step for me? And then, you know, after spending some time going to church sessions and sermons. It made me realize, you know, just try to find acceptance with who I am and stop doing all this craziness and try to get back to the real me. And that's the most important thing. John Fallon says, I have no transportation and I'm very mobility limited. Pop disc in my local back. I can't I can't stand for any length of time. I can't make personal recommendations for everybody. However, if if doing stuff like mutual aid is not is not possible for you, consider tabletop gaming. Tabletop gaming communities are remarkably progressive. They are incredibly, incredibly welcoming. They are really active right now. Tabletop gaming is more popular than ever before. And they are there are really cool people that you can meet in tabletop gaming groups. And they tend to be very progressive and left-leaning spaces. It is a not just not just 40K, not just uh 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 Dungeons and Dragons. There's a whole bunch of different games. Sometimes people just play casual games and most of the goal is just to hang out and meet people and that's a perfect option. Because I'm telling you, the the people that are that are there are really really chill. Um the tabletop the broad tabletop community in the Seattle area for example where I live is in unbelievably large and there are so many cool people involved with it. It's a really really good option. Sometimes you can even do it online and it can start as uh, an online thing and those connections can flourish. Mick Bidens asks, what is mutual aid? Mutual, mutual aid is a, uh, it's a term that refers to uh, uh, basically volunteering what you have uh, and, and in return, other people will be willing to help you. It is mutual aid refers to basically being willing to work together with other people to meet needs. Um, mutual aid takes many different forms. It's a rather general term, but uh, it often in our society takes the form of helping people get food, helping people get transportation, uh, community gardening, things that people engage in freely uh, and are not you're not required to pay anything. It's not transactional. It is mutual assistance for one another. And these groups are designed to make sure that people don't fall through the cracks, that people can get help. Uh, and if once you become known in those groups, you can also receive help if you need it too. Anyway, let's continue this, huh? Let's continue this. It is a fundamental uh, idea. Uh, it's like volunteering for for your community. Yes, it is. It's volunteering for your community is absolutely a form of mutual aid. Uh, s sometimes uh, people describe when they say volunteering, they mean like volunteering for an organization. That's not always the same thing. But generally, mutual aid refers to freely giving what you have um, uh, 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 so that you can 
build build meet people's needs together. And yes, it is an it is a a fundamentally anarchistic principle uh, that is that is uh, believed in very strongly by most anarcho types. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. We got to finish the react, everybody. Much love to all of you, but we have to finish this react. Let's get through. I do think these are valuable topics, though. Let's go. You, I've heard you mention the real you. The real you being uh, a British man. But if you talk to other people, I think they might say the real them. And as, as I think you would agree, people are born gay. They don't choose to be gay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then why and I agree and I believe sorry, I believe that some people generally feel trans since they're born. I do believe that. So that so God made them that, that way, right? So God would have made them that way. I just believe that some people are born as trans, but my issue is kids being indoctrinated to transition when they didn't think about that before. So however you're born, that's the way you, you feel, then that's okay. But I don't believe in people that wouldn't think about these things being indoctrinated to change. Because you said you want it. Because when you're on these shows, you kind of make a point about being like, I'm going back and I'm being true to myself, implying almost that like this trans thing is just some kind of silly uh, psychosis you had. But you're saying now, being born trans is actually a state that God creates people in. I'm saying that some people are born trans, some people are you, born does gay. Does God make people trans? I'm not, I'm not saying anything on that on that subject. Why? I'm just saying that. Some oh, interesting. Got to dodge that question, Ollie. Don't have an answer for that, huh? People feel everybody feels different. You know, everybody feels different. Wait, why size, are you not but, willing to say that God makes people trans? I'm just I know I'm just saying that people are born in different ways. They feel different. Some people might be born intersex. Some people are born gay. Well, you keep, well, you and talk they talk about God going back to how God or Jesus intended me. So I feel like this is an interesting point to resolve because this is something that you bring up in your interviews god makes people trans i find that i find that to be i never said i, ne I never said god made people trans i never said god didn't you make just people did. trans. Make just people, you, you just did okay that, does god make people gay i'm just saying that people are born in different ways because you said you were born you were born gay and so I'm i was born i wasn't born i was born a man and then as a teenager i became gay um, so it didn't happen from birth, but I, I struggled with my, I was very feminine and I struggled with my identity, uh, as a kid. Was um, that your so choice or that, God's choice? Uh, you know, there's a lot of influences that influence people in life, you know. God is all I powerful, would, oh, right? No, no, oh I, no, Ollie London is fucking losing it. Short circuiting. I didn't prepare for this. Oh shit. I wouldn't have turned out the way I did if I wasn't bullied or perhaps. Is God all powerful? Yeah, God is very powerful. Yes, absolutely. All powerful. But, but is God all influence. powerful? God is all powerful, but there are so then he made you gay in... and trans people trans. No, there why are. Why would he make? Why would lives? God all powerful make someone so confused that they wanted to be trans? Well, actually, logically, it doesn't even make sense. If God is all powerful and He creates a, a being, and then this being lives through their lives and then says, "Oh, I want to transition," God made them that way. They, if God is all powerful, it's all part of His design. God wants people to be trans well there are societal environmental god created society that, yes correct but so i'm just saying there yeah. are uh, there's a lot of even there's a lot of human factors that influence god created people. humans you know, if, if people are yes i know that but if people are exposed to gender ideology god they created gender ide ideology what i'm saying is a lot of these people would not have felt this way when they're born but they're being pushed by society god created society <laughs> To think that they're going to transition. God, we got. Uh oh, we got Spinozist Ethan coming in here. God is the universe, and God lives in all things. Oh, Spinozist Ethan coming into body. Fucking weak Calvinist Ollie London. Created society and transitioning as an operation. I mean, just tell where am I logically wrong? Sp Spinozist. Uh, uh, Spinoza was a uh, a a philosopher, a very a very influential on leftism, by the way, philosopher, uh, who he basically believed that the universe itself was was God in action. That there is no singular being God. There is no man in the sky, but rather that the universe itself is what we call God. That the universe existing at all. Uh, 
is what we would refer to as God. Um, and therefore all parts of the universe are a part of God. Any cruelty done to the universe is a cruelty done to God. Um, and of course it gets much more complicated from there. I don't want to misrepresent Spinoza, but, uh, but what Ethan is saying here that all that society itself is an expression of 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 God uh, uh, is is certainly uh, in line with certain schools of Spinoza's thought. Anyway, and then I was referencing Calvin, John, uh, John Calvin, uh, who. Calvinism is like the predominant philosophy that most modern Christianity follows. It's basically the idea that people, there are there are people who are chosen to be God, uh, God's chosen people, and and you will see that reflected in their actions. That that all people are predestined at birth to either uh, to either follow God's path or not. But the way that you know you're one of the good ones is if you're a good Christian who expresses themselves Christianly. Um, Calvinism is is the fundamental, like one of the fundamental forms of modern Christianity, even if people don't admit it. So, anyway, yeah, it 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 is where yes, Calvinism was very influential on the Protestant work ethic, etc. So yeah. I don't see any logical conclusion that doesn't come to the idea that God made people trans. I never said God made anyone trans. I just said that society and the environment made around society. people influence people. He's all powerful, right? You said he's all powerful. Yes, God. Ollie is Catholic. If he recognizes John Calvin at all, he's supposed to consider him a heretic. You would not believe how many modern Catholics, they will never admit it, obviously, because John Calvin was a heretic to them, but modern tons of modern Catholicism is heavily influenced by the philosophies of John Calvin uh, and tons of other Protestantism has leaked into into modern ca uh, Catholicism in so many ways it's hard to even track. But yes, I just wanted to be clear about that. It is all powerful, but also humans have influences on other humans. But he made humans. No, this isn't going anywhere. <laughs> it's not, is it? Okay, let's go on. Um, do you believe that the Bible is against transgenderism or what's your thought on that as a, as a I guess, a newborn Christian? Well, you know, the Bible was written um, a long time ago, and there are things in the Bible, such as in the Old Testament, that aren't relevant to today's society. We know mm, that. Um, so we have to adapt what was written 2,000 years ago to the modern day. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not one for policing how adults live their lives. But I think, you know, transgenderism wasn't in the Bible because there weren't trans people <laughs> visible there were back trans then. Of course. No, no. Look, I've even got this in my book, even there was a Roman emperor that was trans. He used to dress as a woman. So we know there's the instances, but I'm just saying in the did Bible society itself, influence no him? Did, did society influence the emperor to be trans? Well, I wasn't alive then. Well, but, hold on. Um, you wrote was... about it in your book. God. Come in. Dang, man. Yes, but so, so there were some um, Roman scholars that were around at the time and taken from their writings. He used Coming to dress out. as a woman. He used to act like a woman, and his wife would have to call him ma'am. Now, I, I wasn't around back then, so I don't know the exact details, but he thought he was a woman. So, you know, maybe he, he could have been born like that. Some people are born like that, and they generally think that they're so in the wrong body. So You don't have an opinion on if the Bible supports transgenderism or not, or, get, well, or, or homosexuality written, even. No, the Bible was written a long time well, ago. Yeah, then why, but, but surely, I mean, you know, uh, why use the Bible as a guide for anything in your life if, if it was written so long ago? I don't understand that point. Because, Ethan, because there's many teachings in the Bible that are very, very positive, uh, you know, about love and acceptance and kindness um, and trying to help humanity. Um, it was written a long time ago. So, like I said, the Old Testament. There's also a story about this, like uh, sisters raping their dad. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Old we Testament don't like that has one. things. Okay, I like your optimism. So we I'm take... saying the Old Testament. Oh, has we do, we're not doing the Old Testament. Okay, cool. So we well, don't believe. Okay. Real quick, I want to cite you guys something. Real quick, okay? I want to read you guys something. All right. This is a this is a verse from the New Testament. Okay. Just just because this is very relevant. Okay. Matthew nineteen twelve. There are different reasons why some men cannot marry. Some men are born without the ability to become fathers. Others were made that way later in life by other people. And some men have given up marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. But the person who, who can, can marry should accept this teaching about marriage. Let's read the original King James Version, or the original, the King James Version. 
which I think is a little better. There are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Interesting. Just an interesting little New Testament Bible verse, specifically talking about an ancient concept of somebody who is a eunuch, somebody who does not have or uh, does not have genitalia. Okay, good. I Catholics heard... don't use King James Version. Uh, hold on. I believe they do. Or do they use, oh, they use the new revised standard edition? Is that the one that people use? Is that what Catholics use now? I'm pretty sure that lots of Catholics do favor the King James Bible, even still. The KJV is the Anglican version. The preferred version is the NRSV. Okay. No, they don't. Former Catholic. Okay, my bad. I am not a Catholic. I was, I did not grow up Catholic. I feel like I, but I feel like I remember, I feel like I remember uh, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos selling a King James Version. But I guess they're not. I guess they're not Catholics because they're Anglicans. They're aw an offshoot. Eh, whatever. Thank you. New International Version? No, that, I doubt they use New International Version. New International Version is clowned on by, by all kinds of Christians. You, when you're on these shows, I notice you talk a lot about this specific story of Jesus that inspired you, how he help the lepers when nobody else would and that you in your at the time when you found Jesus you felt like the leper that's a nice story well i thought it was a good analogy because i felt like um for many years i was rejected by society i was treated like an outcast just like the leper so i thought it was a good analogy to um to me actually. i agree mm -hmm. it is a really good analogy what other bible stories do you like yes yes i i i recognize that there's the apocrypha as it's referred to, or the De Deuteron, can De Deuteron canon that aren't in Protestant Bibles, but not all, I don't believe all Catholic Bibles include the Apocrypha. I could be wrong though. Like I said, I didn't grow up Catholic. I do know that there are, there are, there are some major, there is some stuff that is not, that is in the Catholic Bible that is not in like the King James Version. Um, Catholics use that in their Bible. No, they all do. Okay, fair enough. Protestants are barely Christian. Ah, all right, we're not going to get into that. They do. It's canon that it has to. Oh, okay. There are some apocrypha that Catholics don't even include. Yes, I know that. Of course, everybody... Okay, all of you arguing about this here are going to get proven wrong because keep in mind there's been like 900 different designations throughout history of what books are going to be included and unincluded. Let's continue. Um, so there's the tale of the um, lost sheep um, in Luke, the parable of the lost sheep, where a sheep goes missing um, from a flock of 100. And the shepherd decides, should he stay with the flock or should he go and help this sheep? And he actually goes into the wilderness to help the sheep because he realizes that every sheep is one of God's children. So he needs to help them and be responsible for them. Which verse was that? I want to read that one. Uh, it's in Luke and Matthew. Luke and Matthew. Do you know the... The number? I can't give you the exact chapter, but you can look it up. Is there any other uh, uh, Bible stories you like? I'm looking for good recommendations. Yeah, there's also when Jesus um, met a Roman officer, and this Roman officer had a lot of power. But instead of, you know, abusing that power like many Roman officers did, he was actually kind to his servants. He had servants that were captured um, from battles, and they were working in his house, but he treated them the same he treated everyone else. So that's another great analogy that, you know, Jesus looked at people and helped people that helped other people. And, you know, kindness is very important. Do you know the, the verse on that one so I can reference it? I can't quote it off the top of my you head. You don't know where that one is. Well, there's a lot of verses in the Bible. There's a lot of chapters, but I can tell you specific stories that I like. Okay. I was just testing you, Ollie. You know what I mean? I know. I, know. I was just trying to test you. You know, I was trying to do a fast one on you. Yeah, but I want to ask, um, you know, if we're talking about protecting kids... It all comes down to protecting kids, right? I mean, this is the thesis I've heard you explain. So as a Catholic, uh, do you, what do you think poses a greater threat, drag shows or clergy members? 
Well, actually, there's a lot of, of scandals and very bad things that have happened with the clergy. And, you know, I'm against all forms of abuse. So there's a lot that the Catholic Church has done in the past. There was even a cardinal that I believe he died um, earlier this year, an Australian cardinal that was uh, accused of some horrific things. And there's, it's, there's a lot of that going on as well. So that needs to be addressed. And I will call that out as well, as well as calling out drag shows that are sexualizing kids, because all forms of child abuse, whether it's in a church, whether it's in a religious organization, <laughs> Or, or all forms are super bad, and yet, and yet, Ollie London has chosen to make his entire platform about uh, groomers that he vaguely references, and not the verified systemic child abuse that has taken place in the Catholic Church. The overwhelmingly verified systemic, not well known and documented even within the church child abuse you know ollie london hasn't made his entire platform about that kind of odd isn't it would you, if you had kids would you feel more comfortable leaving them at a drag uh time story time or with a clergy member you know if i had kids i would actually be with them all the time i wouldn't leave them anywhere you would never leave them no, because, you know, as a well, parent, hypothetically, you, like, you know, you don't have to do it. I'm just talking hypothetically. Would you leave? Would you feel more comfortable leaving them with a clergyman, uh, a member of the of the Catholic Church or at the Bible or sorry, the drag queen story time hour? Again, neither. I wouldn't want to leave. Kids it's, not, anywhere it's just a theoretical. It's just theoretical. No, no, I, I get that. But I'm just saying I would even even if it was you no know, leaving. A right. Kid but you have a, to choose one. Which oh, one yeah. Do you this trust is this more? is a deranged cope, of course, just deranged cope. And of course, Ollie London is truly struggling now. Well, I wouldn't leave my kid anyway. Like I wouldn't leave a kid, and I think parents have a duty to right. But just theoretically, wh which kids. one would you choose? I, I'm not going to answer that because right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't you choose wouldn't. either. You wouldn't. Okay, let's put it this way: There's a dude named Barry. He's got kids, and he goes, "I have no choice. I have to leave my kids either with the clergyman." Or at the drag show. I don't have a choice. Something crazy is happening. They're right next to each other. It says, ah, where do I leave my kids? Where do you think Barry should leave his kids? Well, again, I wouldn't want to leave kids anywhere. But he, you know, Barry doesn't have a choice. He, he doesn't have a choice. He's in this horrible but, predicament. But Ethan, I'm not Barry. I can't answer that question. Well, he, <laughs> Ethan is trolling so hard. If Ollie London was... See, Ollie London is in a rough position because if Ollie London leaves here, then everyone, then forever, the entire internet will say, Ollie London runs from H3H3. But instead, staying... Ethan is just running circles around Ollie London and trolling the shit out of Ollie London, making him look like trash. This is, oh God, this is, oh God, it's uh, the pain. Oh, it's wonderful to witness. Thank you for advice. Quick, Ollie, where should I put my kids? You put me on the spot. You know, I, I wouldn't, as an adult, like, I would say Ollie, Barry, as a just Catholic, as true, a... tipster, good to see you. Thanks for coming by. It is actually true. Ollie London is, the title of this video is Ethan obliterates Ollie London in a brutal debate. And it is so true. The most, the least clickbait title that has ever been seen. Ollie London hasn't had a single moment of looking good in this entire thing, not even a little. From the very beginning until this moment, every single thing that Ollie has said has been torn apart by Ethan. And Ethan has done it with this sort of like casual uh, approach that's just so funny to watch. It's so funny. Catholic, I find it very concerning that you are hesitant to even answer that question. No, I'm saying it doesn't matter whether it's a, a Catholic church, a drag show, or even an, an after-school club That's fair, where, it's, you know, the teachers oh, aren't present. I wouldn't leave the kid anywhere. I wouldn't <clears throat> leave the kid at some weekend activity, like a sports activity. I think the parents should always be there. Right. So it's not a question okay. of the church versus, um, you know, whatever. It's a question of just, in general, parents should always be with their kids. But that's not reasonable. Parents can't always be with their kids. I mean, that's no, uh, no. Of course, of, yeah. of course, it's not always reasonable. But I'm just saying, in an ideal scenario, you know, because uh, look, there are cases that that happen. Many cases that don't happen. But I'm just saying, it's you've always got to be careful because there are people out well, there. Well, let's that assume are that you're a good Christian. Yeah, God, God is so powerful that you can't trust leaving your kids around His servants on earth.
Ah, yes, what a powerful and amazing God. And what a great church, too, that you don't feel comfortable leaving your kids around the representatives of God on earth and the and the and the the uh, registered and decorated members of your church. Incredible. Unbelievable. Jenny, amazing. You say I'd leave them uh, with the Catholic Church. We've talked about the number of kids who are doing irreversible transitioning. All powerful, all powerful God moment. God, God whispering in your ear. Hey, uh, hey, sorry about those guys. I, those guys I set up as my representatives on earth. They're, uh, they're a little creepy. Don't leave your kids around them. They'll rape you. In America, it's very, very small. We're talking like 250 a year by my estimate. And that's based on government data. I know you you uh, dispute it. You know, there's mm -hmm. a recent report that came out in France, and the reason I bring this one up is just because it's the most recent and comprehensive one. Quite disturbing. Uh, this came out, I believe, in 2021, called the Independent Commission of, on Sexual Abuse in the Church. It uh, was a huge government uh, commission to look at this openly and honestly and try to figure out what's going on. 2,900 and 3,200 clergy members were involved in sexual abuse of minors during that period in oh France. Oh my God. It's estimated that they abused around 330,000 kids. Now, if you do a percentage of that, and this is really kind of surprising to me, and tell me what you think. Assuming there are around 15,000 to 20,000 clergy members in France at any given time, the, percent of, the percentage of clergymen involved in abuse of minors would be 15 to 20 percent. Yeah, that's absolutely horrifying. And also there's in Ireland as well, there was a lot of abuse that was covered up. And no, it doesn't matter. Seems like that affects more church. kids. Than no, the no, that, than that the is directly. equally wrong. Whoever exposed. Uh, literally just ignored what Ethan said. Seems like that's a bigger issue than this thing that you're making up about drag queens reading the, the Rainbow Fish book. Seems like you should, if you really care, seems like you should actually be devoting your platform to the t 15 to 20 percent of priests that are abusing children. And God forbid that we look into the colonial history of the Catholic Church because we already know what happens if you look into the colonial history of the Catholic Church. We already know what the legacy of, of, of boarding schools uh, designed to torture and punish and abuse native children in Canada. Uh, what what uh, boarding schools and missionary groups all across South America and Africa? God forbid. It doesn't matter whether it's a church or not. Raping a, a kid is equally is as horrific. wrong as going to a drag show. Look, it's equally wrong if someone abuses a kid. So that's what I'm saying okay. here. So if a kid Big is being there, abused, buddy. is there any that's huge the being there, abused buddy. at a drag show? When when drag shows are sexually explicit, is that the that same as abuse. raping them? I, that is also child abuse. I'm just saying, if a, a drag queen performs a sexually mm. explicit act in front of the kids, that is Damn. abuse. If we're worried about wow, the... Ollie London, uh, downplaying downplaying the abuse of the church. How interesting. Kids, we're looking. You're a member of an organization, which, by my estimate, which again, it's just an estimate, uh, but fifteen to twenty percent of the clergy members are sexual predators. Why is it that you're focused on the drag shows and not the Catholic Church, when per capita and the volume is way more in the Catholic Church? Well, the specific organization Gays Against Groomers is focused solely on the issue of indoctrinating children, exposing them to sex. If it was called, you know, Catholics Against Groomers, that would be focused on that issue. But it's a specific issue. Not every organization can focus on every issue, but their uh, job is to expose a specific issue within a specific group. And granted, like you said, there are in France, there was in Ireland some horrific cases. And, you know, it's the job of the Pope and the Catholic Church to vigorously investigate that because it's disgusting for any person, uh, whether a clergy member or not, to abuse it. This really, really does lay bare just how empty the anti, the, this conservative uh, save the children movement is. They look the other way when there is blatant evidence of widespread uh, child abuse in institutions that are designed to give 
uh, leaders access to children, to give leaders protection, they look the other way and then they freak out and scream and point at drag queens doing their own thing, at a drag queen reading a book for kids and say, this is the same thing, we need to be super concerned. You, Where's the culture war? Where's the culture war over the ritualistic abuse, the system, the systemic abuse of children? And guess what, guys? Sorry uh, to the, the Protestantoids out there. It's not just the Catholic Church. The Southern Baptist Convention just had an unbelievably massive expose, uh, a multi-journalistic uh, uh, report published showing that here in America, in those Protestant churches, those ba Southern Baptist righteous preachers are doing the exact same thing. They are utilizing their access to the community. They are utilizing their social power, their God-given power to abuse children. No culture war over that, huh? Where's the culture war over that? Where's the freak out over that, conservatives? You wanna protect the children? Start protecting them from your fucking selves. The child is absolutely wrong and it should be investigated to the full and every single victim deserves justice. It just seems to justice. me a little disingenuous when you're gonna point, let's say you've got the whole hotel, a whole building, it's on fire. But in the backyard, there's like a dog house that's on fire. There's no dog in it, by the way. It's just a small structure. And you're telling the fire department, we need to put out the dog house fire. Don't worry about the fucking massive apartment building that's on fire. Let's put out the dog house. To me, that seems like you're focused on the wrong thing. What's the point of focusing on the dog house when the, you know, the whole building is on fire, right? Well, no, I mean, I talk up on my Twitter about all forms of abuse. If there's somebody that abuses a kid, you know, if it's a news story, I do share on that. So. If, if, if you haven't provided evidence, all Ollie London can do is cope and say, well, if, well, if, well, if. There's verified systemic abuse, systematic abuse of children going on in the church that you pledge your loyalty and faith to. And you're sitting here worried about drag shows in America. But I'm just saying the specific organization Gays Against Groomers focuses on a specific subject. But you're right, all forms of abuse are incredibly wrong and they should also get uh, light shed on them 100%. Are you interested in uh, firearm deaths in, of kids? Because that's the leading death, actually, of kids in America today. Yeah, that's absolutely horrific. What we, what we see every day with schools being shut up, it's absolutely horrifying. Right. But somehow the drag children, show no, is children more... should be. You know, Ethan, we're on the same page. I just children don't understand why the drag show is more pertinent because you're doing a tour, right? You're doing all the right wings. You even wrote a book for Pete's sake called Gender Madness. Why is this topic so important when we're talking about protecting kids and there's just these incredibly more pertinent issues? Uh, you know, firearm deaths, the leading cause of death in kids, and you're talking about an organization with 15 to 20% of sexual predators. I hope he pushes this further. I wanna see if he pushes it to get Ollie to to try and, to force Ollie to try and take a like anti-Second Amendment position. Because by the way, one of the greatest things that you can do to destroy a conservative's career is get them to publicly uh, take an anti-Second Amendment stance. The conser like the Second Amendment is like one of the biggest wedge issues for conservatives. It's it's stronger than almost any other issue. If a conservative goes anti Second Amendment or is even excuse me perceived as second as anti Second Amendment, they'll be done. It's like a it's like a career ender. By my estimate, I just don't understand the focus on the drag show. Don't you think that the conservative movement is overly focused on transgender issues? Uh... Well, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you've just highlighted there are so many different issues in the world. And, you know, I'm trying to focus on one specific issue that we have seen a rise in the last few years, uh, a very shocking rise, you know. But equally, the issue of kids in schools, that is horrific. Every kid should be protected and safe going to a school. Just like if a kid is at a church, they should be protected. No child should be getting abused. But, you know, I'm specifically focused on one subject right now because, mm. you know, I've struggled with gender ideology. I've seen the trend. This is my... But it's like the whole right-wing uh, apparatus is focused on that. Isn't that odd? I mean, it just seems odd that the entire right-wing apparatus is focused on trans issues. 
you find that odd. Why are they all so focused on trans issues? Well, I mean, they talk about a lot of other issues as well, but what's happening at the moment is there is a lot that, of... Um, right, they talk about a lot of issues, but I think we can all agree that that is... Uh, that's kind of the most pertinent it, for them, right? Even in it, polls, it's a very, yeah, even in polls, people say uh, trans trans issues is the most important to them of conservatives. Why is that? Well, I mean, I mean, correct, because it is a very um, big subject right now because we're seeing. Remember, point z what was it? Point zero zero four nine percent of the population uh, of kids in the U.S were even getting access to trans surgeries. That was the number that, that Ethan was posting or that Ethan brought up in the beginning that Ollie agreed to. Ollie agreed that was an accurate number. And Ollie is now trying to pretend that it's a big, big issue. This is such this is such a masterful move by Ethan. Ethan absolutely, absolutely nailed Ollie London on this one. Yeah, you know, every day these um, news stories of of children with horrific um, stories at gender clinics. We're seeing, you know, drag queens. Uh, not all drag queens, like I said, but we're seeing drag shows where they're doing very sexually explicit things, and it's become a real recent phenomenon in the last few years, and it's rising every day. So the reason conservatives speak up is because it's a rising issue. They're trying to counter it before it gets even more out of hand, because you know mm. we're seeing oh, yeah, some very totally. sad things. Uh, the Nashville police still haven't released the manifesto, but when uh, Audrey Hale initially shut up that school, they said that. Hold on. Ollie London just said they haven't released the manifesto. Although journalists did read it. And they explicitly stated that the political motivations of the Nashville shooter were uh, essentially not present the the peop the journalists who the police allowed to read the manifesto the nashville police which the nashville police is not a woke organization okay the nashville police is not a democratic organization all right they gave it to journalists to allow journalists to read and report on the, the manifesto and the predominant takeaway from the manifesto was an idolization of previous mass shooters now it's funny because today we learned something about a a pretty nasty shooting that happened uh, yesterday or day before yesterday didn't we and if you look at the fbi statistics on mass shootings there's one particular political association that comes out on top and one particular identity group that comes out on top. And if you wanna know what that is, according to the super woke FBI, it's right-wing white men, specifically white supremacist right-wing white men. Uh, gender, the person's gender ideology may have played a role. They believe there was- Oh, but um, that's silly. Because I mean, that. a lot of the, well, have I mentioned that you're selling a lunchbox with a trans woman on it? I don't think you mentioned it, Ethan. No, I don't think you said it at all, actually. Okay. So how do you just... Ollie literally says, the manifesto hasn't been released, but I'm just going to make up that gender ideology had something to do with the Nashville shooting. Even though every single person who has seen and reported on the manifesto has said it actually did not have any references to major political movements and that the manifesto was fixated on idolizing previous shooters amazing level of dishonesty on video forever ollie london is on video forever being this much of a disgusting liar if i haven't mentioned it how do you justify this i've already gone through it, gone through it. oh we have talked about it okay i'm just curious let me look at the photos i mean this is definitely for kids it's pretty small it can't even fit like a little bread in it barely and like look up. i mean these blueberries look monstrous next to that that's certainly for kids right yeah it's too small it's for just an a adult. Lunchbox. what's that no it's for anyone anyone that likes k-pop for anyone that likes k-pop but grown-ups i mean my god what are they eating for lunch five blueberries no i, I would buy that because it's cute you know oh, okay. as a, i think grown-ups like that Wait, you would buy like a lunchbox with a trans woman on it why would you do that 
it's a K-pop. It's an image of a K-pop. I would buy it because it's cute. You know, I like K-pop stuff. I love Korean culture. It's it's a cute K-pop lunchbox. Mm -hmm. But clearly, you're not going to be buying it. I, well, not just because I don't want to support you financially, like I said. Thanks. Have you seen uh, Bella Delphine's new merch? Uh, interestingly, uh, it looks quite similar to uh, what you're selling. <laughs> That's all. Oh my god! The fucking team whipped that up! What?! That is, <laughs> come on. All right, that's just unfair. When you have a production team that can edit that up in real time, oh, come on. <laughs> Fucking rolled. Obviously, you've just photoshopped <laughs> that. Oh, wait, how dare you accuse <laughs> me of that? Excuse me, Ollie. Kind of I'll have you know that's defamation. <laughs> oh, kind of obvious because no. it's just Ollie's squad. Do you think, Ollie, do you think Ollie, even Ollie had to crack up at that one? Holy shit. The New Testament is a uh, child appropriate. Yeah, there's a great teachings in the Bible yeah. that it's all about kindness and, and Roman loving thy neighbor. Uh, Roman uh, 1, 26 to 27. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. Why is it that you feel entitled to be gay when it clearly states well, like I said, that like that I, is, that is um, a... Ethan, like I said, sorry, like I said earlier, this book was written, you know, a long time ago where um, <sighs> ideologies were different. And Holy, you can't come interpret. on, we can't play that game where you pick and choose Ethan, the ones you, you can't like. Interpret. That's silly. You can't interpret every single line and take it as gospel. You have to choose the, the bits that are relevant to modern society and that are relevant to... Well, what's to the point of doing the whole God, God's Word thing if you're just going to pick the ones you like? I thought God's Word was infallible. You can't be like, yo, God, I love you and you're infallible and all, but this one, it's a little outdated. That doesn't you know, make a lot of sense like, to me. Ethan, just like with other textbooks from religions <sighs> like the Quran, people interpret it differently. <laughs> Everybody in chat saying... Ollie London can't take the gospel as gospel. <laughs> True. Timothy I can't, uh, I can't one have nine to one ten says, understanding this, the law is not laid down. Wait, for the wait, wait! Did Ollie London actually say that? Hold on a second. And take it as gospel. You have to wait, choose. Wait, 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 wait! wait. Ollie London another. actually said that, and I missed it because I was laughing. Wait a minute. Men committing shameless acts with men. You feel entitled to be gay. When it clearly states well, like I said, that that like is, I, that is um, a, Ethan, like I said, sorry, like I said earlier, this book was written, you know, a long time ago, where um, ideologies were different. And Holly, you can't come interpret. on, we can't play that game where you pick and choose Ethan, the ones you, you like. That's silly. You can't interpret every single line and take it as gospel. You have to choose the. <laughs> oh my God! This clip needs to be a per this clip needs to be immortalized as associated you can't take the gospel as gospels you can't take the new testament as gospel insane i thought that was chatters just being funny but i didn't i was laughing and i didn't hear the original line holy shit by the way, Tipster, let me give you a uh, let me give you a fancy name in the site chat. Hold on a second. I gotta give you that. I gotta give you that fancy name. You deserve a fancy name. Gotta get that creator tag. There you go. Boing. There you are. Try typing now. You got a fancy one. Let's continue. Holy moly the bits that are relevant to modern society and that are relevant well, what's to the point of doing the whole you know, God, god's kind of. word thing if you're just gonna pick the ones you like i thought god's word was infallible you can't be like yo god i love you and you're infallible and all but this one it's a little outdated that doesn't you know, make people, a lot of sense just like, to me Ethan, just like with other textbooks from religions like the quran people interpret it differently <laughs> timothy uh 1 9 through 110 says understanding this the law is not laid down for the just but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, and for those who strike their father and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. What about Corinthians 6, 9? Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor 
idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. There's a lot of lines that speak against homosexuality, but not a lot of lines to speak against transgender. So why is it that transgender, uh, you should be more concerned about the fact that you are uh, a homosexual. That seems to be a great sin. He's got him. Well, again, like I told you, you don't have to interpret every single thing but there's from a the lot. Bible. Because, there's like a lot of anti-gay lines. See, this was written in a time society. Okay, let me ask you this then. So what's you can't the diff- interpret what's the every difference? single word, but you can choose parts of the Bible that are relevant to you and the modern society and learn from them, like kindness, which is a very important message. Do you think it's kind to tell a suicidal child that they can't transition? No, but I think adults have a responsibility to help that child's mental health support. So whether that's therapy sessions If a child is, if a child... <laughs> Kildroy says, see Demon Mama, the smart Catholic cope would be to say that non-Christians can't interpret the gospel properly and then clap back with some kind of other line. But Ollie London is a fake Catholic with no media training, so he's just getting bodied. True! If you wanted to be the Giga Chad Catholoid, you would be, you would go, that is not the original Latin, and you are not a priest. How dare you step into the realm of God? How dare you step between man and God as is the role of a priest? And then you'd start chanting in Latin. That's the real Catholic response. And uh, if you were, that's what, that's what Ollie should be doing, but Ollie is literally not prepared. is suicidal do you believe it's okay for them to transition all these two well, the, fucking, the two fucking virgin saying, that's the argument that many gender clinics use to coerce parents to transition their kids but you actually have to treat the real issues which is maybe the kid is suffering from depression or they have struggles with other what do you mean the real issues, issues no but th- this is a real issue kids are suicidal because of their gender dysphoria i mean that's a real issue but Ethan, what I'm trying to say is if you put a vulnerable kid that's already struggling with a mental health on very high doses of hormones or puberty blockers, well, no, no, no. that is only, no, th- th- that's, th- only that's after they issues. decide. Uh, that's after they decide. This kid is, is suicidal. The only way to save their life, as you hear from a lot of people, is to help them transition. What is wrong with that? No, correct. You hear that a lot, but you, has it ever happened? Address- Demon Mama, you did that a little too well. Listen, okay. I have a lot. I have a lot of experience dealing with Christians. Okay, I wasn't raised Catholic, but I've dealt with a lot of Catholics. I I was raised fundamentalist evangelical, and my God, have I dealt with them a lot? Okay, listen. I've had a lot of history with Christians. Okay, I'm kind of. I kind of know. I kind of know what I'm dealing with. Okay. Has a child transitioning ever saved a child's life? Well, you need to address the mental health issues if a kid is. Has it ever that saved way, a child's life? Uh, transitioning. Yeah. Yes, of course there will be cases where. So kids if it saved happy. even one child's life, then where do you get off preventing this from happening? You say one child's all that matters. If you can admit to me that transi- a child transitioning saved their life, even one of them, why would you? support a movement that outlaws it you support legislation that makes it illegal why is that because firstly these are kids they cannot consent to this they do not understand the long-term consequences but you don't look at what happens later down the line even like six uh, years uh, down uh, the line we got to stick on this point you said that transitioning has saved a child's life let's forget about all the other static let's forget about all the other static why is it that you would want to outlaw a, a medical procedure that saved a child's life. That's because not kind, is it? No, you have to support the kid's mental health, but you cannot put them on hormones. Do you believe that it should be illegal? Surgery. Do you believe that it should be illegal for kids to transition? I believe for medical transitions, it should be 18 plus, yes. Even if the kid is going to kill himself, as you admitted, the kid, it saved the child's life. You said that. So you believe I'm this kid that- should kill themselves rather than transition? After- Absolutely not. Don't try to put words in my mouth. Uh, kids well, I'm just, need mental okay. health. No, I, I'm not trying to put any words in your mouth. I'm just trying to reconcile. You are saying, on one hand, that transitioning saved the kid's life, and also saying that transitioning shouldn't be allowed until they're 18 plus. So this child saying, has no to... recourse other than to kill themselves in this hypothetical well, situation we've created. 
in this hypothetical situation instead of that actually take the kid. This hypothetical is reality, Ollie. You've admitted it already in this conversation that there are children who are experiencing dysphoria who want to have puberty blockers and you don't believe they should be allowed to. You believe, you just stated 10 seconds ago, this is such a, this is, there's just, there's just, a, this is just an unambiguous win on Ethan's part. Ollie has nothing here and looks like shit. Ollie unironically looks like a deranged psychopath. Like not just literally, Ollie does actually look like a deranged psychopath, like an actual scary skeleton from a Halloween store with uh, fucked up eyes and f a fucked up face. But also Ollie just comes off as a evil psychopath who's willing to look the other way when it comes to the Catholic church, but is hyper fixated on calling uh, random queer people uh, groomers with no evidence. Um, to somewhere that's a safe place where they can be surrounded by friends. Right, they do that, people. but again, I don't want to focus on the static because this is a real situation. And let's say, even if it's just one kid, let's let's stay focused here, Ollie. One kid saved his life. You're telling that kid you cannot get that procedure. That's correct. I'm saying that kids can't consent to this. Kids need better mental health support, so there should be a focus on 18 mental plus. health you're support. You're saying this kid cannot get the procedure that saved his life. That's what you're I'm saying. saying that it should, I'm saying that 18 plus for all procedures on kids because kids cannot consent, so they need mental health support instead. Right. So the kid would kill himself. No, you give the kid. But then why did you say that it saves them. kids' lives, Ollie? Don't you understand? That you're I'm, not making you sense. Are, I'm saying that there will be some kids that may feel better and feel like their lives. No, 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 no. But they. I'm going to be really mean here for a second. I'm going to be really, really mean for a second. I think Ollie deserves it. Got to be honest. Got to be honest. Got to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could get, uh, I wish we could get one of the times when Ollie was smiling because that was when it really stuck out. That was when it really stuck out. The, 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 the really, really fucked up, uneven, but slightly beady and spooky eyes, the fucked up camera, nearly non-existent in almost invisible nose. Sorry. Just saying, just saying. Hey, no, no, no. They, you s agreed with me, Ollie, just a few minutes ago that transitioning has saved kids' lives. Oh, like like anything in life, it can save lives, but also a lot of people. Like anything in life, what does that mean? A thing. What no, else? A lot of people will become suicidal later down the line because their body is completely messed up. Um, there, you know, so many different issues with their health. No, uh, no one is talking about surgeries right now. Ethan is specifically talking about general gender affirming care, which you are saying people shouldn't have access to until they're after 18. You're an idiot. You look horrible. You look like a complete and utter psychopath. Here we go. Here's a little bit more of an accurate one. See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about here? You guys, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm exaggerating too much. I'm sorry. I just don't think I am. Sorry, everybody. Um, that they're not being informed about. So it's about- 99% don't regret it. No, I'm just saying that it's informed consent. Kids can't consent. If well, a kid kids is can't, feeling kids, that way... Kids can't consent to anything. What are we doing? No, We're not allowing them to... Uh, kids can't consent to go to church. Kids can't consent to go to school. Kids can't consent to anything. We, we as parents, make the best decision we can for the welfare of the kid. Don't you agree? I mean, this whole idea of consent is kind of moot when you consider all the things kids do in their, li in their lives every day. Well, it's like a, a little kid that wants to be a dinosaur. Do you suddenly give them a surgery? Do you, you like think that wanting to be a dinosaur? Do you suddenly give them a surgery? Do you see how quickly Ollie London goes back to the fucking Lord of the Rings argument? The moment, the moment 
that you stop being absolutely specific. Ollie London is like, well, say that a child wants to be a dinosaur. Do you send him to the Gandalf gender clinic to have him teleported into the dinosaur realm? Do you, Ethan? Do you teleport him with the, to the wizard in the dinosaur realm? They just immediately, the moment that you, the second you give them any wiggle room, they fucking fly off the handle into some psychopathic fictional world. Oh, you're, t you're saying that kids should be able to reasonably get access to gender care? You mean you want to turn them into dinosaurs with a wizard? God, I hate these people. Fuck, I can't stand. God, I can't fucking st I can't stand. Conservatives are driving me crazy. They're making me lose my mind again. Holy fuck! ...is, is uh, comparable to uh, gender dysphoria, which is a known medical condition. I'm saying that some kids... You go said it's phases. like kids wanting to be dinosaurs, Ollie. I don't understand the comparison. Well, no, it is. It's like some kids change their mind about certain things. They're not mature enough to make these decisions. Do so you think wanting to, to be a parents. dinosaur is comparable to uh, being uh, trans? I'm saying if a 10-year-old kid dresses up as a dinosaur every day, they tell their dad they're a tyrannosaurus. Has that happened? Can you uh, cite that happening? I'm. You've been speaking about theoretical things. I'm speaking about. Well, no, 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 no. Well, we're talking about theoretical. Would you transition a child? We're talking about theoretical situations, but they are real, happening in the real world. There are kids whose lives are being saved because, and this is the small amount of kids who undergo it. Very small amount that do it under doctors supervision and panels and stuff it's saving their lives this is happening okay people are not i don't as far as i know maybe you can correct me saying i'm a dinosaur i need to transit yeah, of course as tipster points out the the unbelievable the grand cosmic irony of the of this coming from someone who spent three hundred thousand dollars trying to transition into jimin from bts the incredible irony. As an adult! As a fucking adult! ...position into a dinosaur. No, I'm saying, yeah, the kids want different things. They don't understand or comprehend. I notice you're saying, I'm saying a lot. You say things, but you don't like to uh, stay accountable to it. You say, no, I'm saying this. No, I'm saying this. No, I'm saying this. Why won't you give me definitive answers? Well, I'm, I'm equating it. You know what? It is the same. It's, if a child wants to be a dinosaur, you don't cut okay, off their okay. it's the same. body parts. It's the it's same. The same as being, Gender... It's the same as medically transitioning okay. a child and giving them Good. surgery. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you said that. Gender dysmorphia is a known medical condition. Is there any literature about transitioning to be a dinosaur? Not that you know. <laughs> right. But you said it's the same. But clearly it's not, right? Because no, I'm equating transitioning a kid I'm equating a kid destroy. Sorry, I'm equating a kid identifying in a different way. You don't just suddenly say if a kid feels a certain way, oh, we're going to do this operation, we're going to give you hormones. Kids of course, that doesn't happen. Like that that doesn't happen. Do it as an adult. That doesn't happen. You have a child who's experiencing gender dysmorphia so severe that they're going to kill themselves. Dysphoria, excuse me. They're undergoing panels and doctors and stuff. And this kid, we know, and this has happened, either we intervene or the child kills themselves. What's your decision? Most kids grow out of gender That's dysphoria. That's not what I so... asked. Why can't you answer? Most kids no, do I'm not grow out of kids... gender dys uh, yep, this dys is a Yep, that is a blatantly false statement. All evidence we have points to the fact that no, actually... All kids do not grow out of gender dysphoria. The desistance rate is incredibly, incredibly low. Kids who end up receiving uh, puberty blockers, the rate of desistance is unbelievably low. Because as it turns out, you have to be pretty sure about, some, about something about yourself to get to the point of talking to your doctor, talking to your parents, being willing to be questioned in the unnecessarily invasive procedures in this country. It's actually a lot of work to get to that point. Morphia. That's a small number of them, and 99% who get the operations uh, don't regret it. You have to answer this, Ollie. This is important. If well, there's a child that's going to kill itself unless it gets gender-affirming care, what is your decision? Give them the treatment or not? No, you give them mental health support instead. You do not. Oh no, 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 no. That's not what I'm asking. Do if this kid is suicidal, which is a known phenomenon, this happens. Do you let them get the treatment, or do you make them wait till they're 18? You give them other support instead. That's so they kill answer. themselves. 
No, they, how is no, that kind, Dolly? How, how is it? How is that kind that you're letting children's kill themselves instead of letting them get gender affirming, really life saving care? Which, by the way, happens only irreversible gender care, uh, gender surgeries and stuff only happens like 250 times a year. No, it doesn't happen. Well, you have no times. statistics to back that up. Well, there's a clinic in Oregon. I can send you the statistics. There's a clinic in Oregon that does at least 300 surgeries on kids a year. So that's just one that's clinic. That's impossible. Six, that's not true. There's 60 clinics in the U.S. that are pediatric. Oh, over years. Over years. Yeah, 60 kids. over no, years. No, 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 no. See, notice now Ollie London has just resolved to literally is so broken. Ollie is so brain broken that Ollie is mixing up the statistics and just lying. There are 60... The... the According to Ollie London earlier in this video, there are 60 gender clinics. These clinics aren't surgical centers and they aren't the ones doing the surgery. There are just 60 gender clinics in general. Now, now all of a sudden, there's 350 surgeries being done at 60 surgical centers per day, per year, per month. Ollie London has been utterly and completely exposed as a total fraud a complete and utter misinformation machine. So, but again, so there's saying, 50 million kids in America, Ali. That's not a lot. But I'm saying there's 60 gender clinics that are performing these surgeries every single week across the country. So look it up. Every single week? I literally, I wasn't even, I just said, exactly like I just said, Ali London is just ripping numbers out of his ass now. No, I didn't fucking pre-watch this. The only portion that I saw was the portion with the lunchbox. Earlier on, I saw a clip of somebody reacting to the lunchbox portion, and I have seen nothing else. I'm not a fucking pre-watcher. Let's say, many... let's say that of the 1,000, there's 10 kids who are going to kill themselves. Do we let them get this treatment or not? Again, you give the kids mental you're, health support. You're choosing for them to kill themselves, Ollie. No, I'm not. Don't yes, try to are. say that. Yes, but you Ollie, are. Yes, Ollie is. But that's what you're saying, Ollie. Undeniably. I'm not saying that. That is what I'm you're saying. saying. You you're denying them life-saving, gender-affirming care. No, I'm saying... Instead of getting, getting life-saving care, just have a condescending Christian therapist tell you, you should wait until you're 30. That's what happened to me, by the way. When my family pressured me into going into Christian therapy instead of transitioning, by the way, I was an adult when this happened. I was, an, I was an adult when my, my family pressured me into going to a Christian therapist. And I went because I really wanted to show them that I was being genuine. And that Christian therapist told me that I should wait until I was 30 to try transition. I'm not kidding you. That was the actual direct advice of the Christian therapist that I went to. You should wait until you're 30. Your 20s are a tumultuous time. give the kids mental no, health support until yeah, you're they can... Yeah, you're saying use this avenue that doesn't work, that's not going to work to prevent you from killing yourself. You're telling them right. you cannot have the antidote that's going to save your life. You can only do the therapy that I approve of. You can only do the therapy that I say is okay for you, Ollie. You went through this whole gender transition. Why do you deny people the journey that you yourself had? Because I had that journey as an adult, and even though I regret it, I was an adult, but kids cannot consent. You had the journey of trying to turn yourself into Jimin from BTS. You do not represent the trans community. You do not represent the children who are simply trying to save their lives, who are tr simply trying to live genuinely as yourself. Ollie London is such an unbelievably disgusting fraud. And huge props to Ethan for absolutely expo exposing this piece of shit grifter. So I'll say it again. Kids, kids can't not be consent any to anything. Kids can't consent to yes. anything. But Ethan, this is irreversible. We're not just No, it's about not. Something. Sometimes it's not. Most of the times it is reversible. And, no, and, when, and you... when it's not reversible, it's done under extreme care, under doctor supervision. You want this kid to kill themselves, Ollie. How do you live with that? How do you Ethan, betray please. the community, the trans community that you're a part of? You sold yourself out for some attention and some money. You are dooming kids to kill themselves. How do you live with that? Before it was Ethan, cute, silly stuff about transracial and PTS and pop stuff. 
and it was just silly nonsense about uh, ra little racist stuff about Korean people having tiny penises. But now you're, you're actually delving into transphobic, violent transphobia that is going to result in kids dying. You're going to have to reckon with that, Ollie. No, uh, absolutely not. You're trying to paint me out as saying I'm this. Only I'm only saying say what you said. Kids cannot consent. No, Ethan, kids I'm not saying that. Kids can't consent to anything. Kids Kid cannot consent to irreversible can't... hormones or surgeries, Ethan. Okay, a kid they needs to get his leg removed because he has leg cancer. Should he be able to get the, the leg removed? Well, if he has a cancer, yes. But okay, I'm so what's the fucking can't... difference? He can't consent to have his... Ethan right now? This is Ethan right now. Unironically, this is Ethan at Ollie London right now. How do you fucking live with yourself? Good, good fucking question, Ethan. Good question to ask this fucking grifter piece of shit. Leg removed, that's irreversible. Well, many of these kids are being pushed into it. Many grow out of gender dysphoria. If you Google the, right but now- But I'm telling you, kids kill themselves if they don't get this treatment. In the rare case that it's that severe, about 250 a year. Well, show me, okay, pull up a, pull up a case then. I'm sure we can do that. That's not a problem. Give me one second. Gender affirming care is mental health support. There are other ways. It's there actually are other in, ways of the, the, the the American Institute of Psychiatry and Kids Health Pediatrics. They all agree that the correct care for children with dysmorphia is gender affirming care. Do you know more than Pediatrics Association and Psychiatrists Association? Yeah, because all of these you companies do know more. they made two point they made two point two billion dollars uh, transitioning kids last year. A trade association and a, a medical association that's job is to help organize research made $2 billion off of gender transition care. Are you sure that's the argument you want to go with, you absolute brain dead rock? You're trying to tell me that a, a nonprofit association of doctors that is there to organize and share information. These are not, they're not, they're not businesses. You don't walk up to the American Psychology Association and go, hello, I would like to pay $1 million for gender transition today. Jesus fucking Christ. This is one of the worst showings I've ever seen. I hope this ends Ollie London's career. I truly, truly hope this ends Ollie London's career. So it's a multi-billion dollar industry with a lot of powerful So people make kids. So people make money from it, so therefore we shouldn't let kids save them their lives? No, you can provide kids. I'm, I'm not going to keep going on about this same thing. You can provide kids with the right mental health support that doesn't include putting them on harmful hormones that can cause irreversible issues. And when they You're right, we adults, should make it free. People shouldn't be charged for it. Oh. Ollie London broke. No, no. No, I'm just not going to keep going on about the same thing, Ethan. I'm good. I need to go anyway. It's quite late. I want to tell you something. You really have sold your soul in this one. You know what I mean? Like before it was Ethan, cute and innocent, but this soul. new one is you. really sick. And I mean, the Ethan. goals of you to sell a fucking lunch pail with a trans person on it while telling people that they're grooming kids. I mean, you're just a fucking hypocrite, dude. Ethan, you said some horrific comments about Ben Shapiro saying that he should be gassed I'm like in the Holocaust. So you shouldn't be gassed. I didn't say that. I said, you, you, I'll tell you exactly what I said. And how dare you say such a. You, I don't, said, I don't you care. said that. About, I made a no, joke you, that, you he's, that he, he's perpetuating anti Semitism. And therefore, if there's another, you know, then, I, then he can go, you know. And uh, I'd be but happy to, to, I'd be happy to go right behind him. I am about. Jewish, though, so. Chill out. No, I know that, but I'm just saying it's not something to joke about. So, you know, when you're trying to criticize for me for certain oh things, you know, God. you've also said some things that are very harmful as well. Well, hold so on. You take accountability. So, so you're admitting that what you say about trans people is offensive? No, I'm talking well, about... How how I I <laughs> Literally just fucking... E oh my God, Ethan is just straight up like... Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Literally dodging every single fucking blow from Ollie and firing right back. Oh my god. Well, I'm talking about my past behaviors, you know, have been harmful. I'm not I'm talking about your past behavior. I'm talking people. about what you're doing now that endangers children. Because you're trying to make a now quick I'm helping buck. People. Now, no, I'm helping people, Ethan. You're helping Tucker Carlson 
spread propaganda that's going to kill trans people. And you're selling a book called Gender Madness. After you, tra how long have you been a oh, how long have you been a man? How long have you been detransitioned? And you're writing a book already? It's been seven months. Seven <laughs> months. Wow. Really? I mean, you were seven trans months. for years. How are you going to spend seven months as a man and then presume to tell people how to live their lives? That doesn't even make sense, Ollie. That's not enough time to give me an informed decision about what it means to transition, especially when you lived as a trans person for so long. Yeah, but the book is about my how I got to where I was, what led me to that, and how people struggle with different identities. It's actually a self-help book, so it's very positive, empowering about different ways people can help themselves. Gender madness. Here's your best friend, Jamie Mitchell, who's the founder of uh, Gays Against Groomers, supporting... Um, well, here, just What's watch. What's happening now would make, you know, I think Joseph Mengele, uh, I believe that was his name, you know, the Nazi doctor, um, he, you know, this puts him to shame. They are... Do you believe that's an appropriate analogy? Well, uh, Joseph Mengele tortured and uh, performed medical, horrific medical procedures on kids. You know, what Jewish they're doing kids today. The he, Holocaust. He, also, uh, he also committed it's... a genocide against trans people, by the way. He true! committed a genocide. Fucking true! Holy fuck. Ollie London is done for. Against trans people as well. He killed well, if jokes LGBT about the people. Holocaust are off the limit, Ollie, let's be consistent. They are basically using an entire generation How dare you? of children as lab rats for this sick ideology. Um, and she sounds their like him right now. Like any of you know, yeah, even like any abuse of kids, and an, and any experimentation on kids is wrong. Um, and a threat to that. You've been very open about. You, you know, heard it here, Ollie London in this debate says that that trans people getting necessary medical treatment willingly getting necessary medical treatment is the same as a holocaust doctor doing human experiments on unwilling prisoners you got it you heard it here folks ollie london is a disgusting and pathetic fraud and I hope this is the absolute end of Ollie London's measly, pathetic, attention-seeking career. Your conservative voice as well. Is it, is it hard to be, uh, you know, to have a conservative voice now? Uh, yeah. I mean, I am personally conservative. I've actually had an online presence as the gay who's straight on Instagram primarily for over six years. Um, and we Do you believe that doctors are performing Nazi-like uh, experiments on trans kids? Doctors are, are experimenting on kids. To what and, end? You know, what is the any, experiment? Any medical mutilation on kids is bad. And you know, An the, experiment the underlies data, a thesis. What is their thesis? I'm saying there's no long-term data on how does this affect a yes, kid. Yes, there is. 99% don't regret it. How does this affect a kid 20 years down the line? Because They're we happy. 99% are happy. We see issues with their bone density. Studies. Look at the study by Dr. Bradley, Canadian. She was the pioneer for uh, performing these gender-affirming cares on kids. What if I told you Dr. Bradley was a quack? Well, uh, they're all quacks. Anyone that oh. experiments on kids in the first place is a quack. All right, Ollie. We're going to... Uh, anyway, thank you for uh, uh, spending your time. I do appreciate you coming on. But no, it's good to talk. It mm -hmm. was... It was... Uh, it was something. But I... I you know, uh, I do think that since God created... No, Ethan, I get... God created I get trans people. Saying. You know what I mean? And uh, when, when uh, you know, kingdom come, you're going to have to answer for what you're doing. This is not kindness. Jesus Look, does not hate point, uh, trans kids. Jesus doesn't hate anyone. But, you know, oh. uh, what I've been saying throughout the interview, and, you know, we've, we've spoke about this already, is it's I'm simply speaking up about we shouldn't do this to kids. I know you're trying to make the argument that this can lead to It's not happening to kids, Ollie. It's 250 a year. It's not 250 yes, it there is. Are thousands, thousands You're just making that up. That's bullshit. No, you can look on Google. People I've looked up every single thing thousand. you've said. I fact-checked every single th thing you said. It's all propaganda. It's all lies. But look at I've Dr. systematically dis dismantled every single point you have. But you can look at Dr. Gallagher in Miami and see how many operations she does on kids. That's just one clinic. There are 60 clinics plus that are doing this. So imagine every single clinic added up. They're profiting from this. It's seventy thousand dollars they make from a girl. All right, Ollie avoid... London, who is uh, in favor of kids killing themselves. Thank you for calling. But that... it's not even funny to joke about things like that. Oh, it's I'm not, not joking, nice. my friend. Now, I've been talking about mental health support. That's the real issue here. We need to help people with their Bold. struggles and not be putting Bold. them on medication. You know, uh, Ollie it's, London, it's who's in anyway, favor of kids uh, killing themselves. Ethan, Ethan, 
not cool. Right, anyway, thank you for well, your time Well, today. it is not cool, and, actually. That's putting it mildly. It's actually demonic. No, it's not, it's not cool that you're trying to say that I'm pro for that. But that's that. you're literally what you're doing. It's what break. you've said, my friend. No, it's not. It's about, I've been saying about we need to give mental health support instead of putting all of these kids on Gender the Gender affirmation anyway, is mental health support. We'll agree to disagree, and um, good luck. Okay, you're a demon. Oh my god! That was such an unbelievably, unbelievably incredible watch. Do you see why I needed to watch this with you all? Boy, was that cathartic. It is so awesome to see these anti-trans grifters being taken down a peg and to have their points disassembled in real time. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, people like Ollie London are a dime a dozen, but they can be educational. This type of takedown inoculates people to future misinformation about, uh, about uh, trans people. Uh, this type of takedown makes people stronger against disinformation about trans people. It deflates the anti-trans movement. And I gotta say, Ethan absolutely knocked it out of the park here. Just every single point, just severe, and then kept all of the anger until the end. What a great, you absolutely love to see it. Ollie London failed on every single point Ollie London looked like one of the craziest people you could possibly imagine. Uh, uh, and it really goes to show you how weak conservatives are outside of their bubble. The moment that conservatives step outside of a, the gigantic circle jerk that is the conservative media sphere, where Ollie London has been going and getting clap, clap, clapped and back padded for weeks, months, Ollie London has been getting sucked up to by every single anti-trans talking head because how convenient you have a trans detransitioner, an ex-trans who's going around and willing to say, yes, look at what they did to me. They made me turn into Jimin. I looked just like Jimin and I put out a K-pop album. They did it to me. And all the conservatives are like, yeah, keep talking. Yeah, roll the cameras. It's great. It's absolutely amazing to see somebody like this get disassembled in real time. His cope tweet thread. Let's see the cope tweet thread. Yeah, let's look at the cope real quick. What the fuck is a Jimin? Jimin is an act is a a performer. Let's look at the cope tweet real quick. Oh, damn it. Oh, my button stopped working. I hate that when that happens. Oh, whatever. Tonight, I did an interview on Far Left H3 podcast because I believe the importance of educating people about what's going on in regards to the gender-affirming care industry, even if they are pro-gender-affirming care. Oh, yeah. Uh, citing Project Veritas and Tucker Carlson, super educational, saying that, uh, that uh, drag people are potentially grooming children by reading... Uh, the rainbow fish to children in normal clothing. Yeah, totally, totally educational. Out of all of the interviews I've ever done, this was the rudest and most unprofessional person I've ever spoken to. The unprofessionalness literally only occurred at the end. This is just, that's pure cope, just raw cope. The whole time I was interrupted while the host tried to twist words into my mouth saying that because I'm against children being medically transitioned that I support child suicide. No, you weren't. You were allowed to talk so much. In fact, the entire first half was mostly Ollie talking uninterrupted. In fact, Ethan barely talked until the very end, the very tail end, the last third of the interview. The rest of it was Ollie laying out just endless blathering that Ethan just asked questions to. This is, again, mad cope. 
uh, I am against children being medically transitioned, that I support child suicide for not affirming their gender identity and blaming me for children killing themselves and then enter the end, ending the interview calling me a demon. Um, yeah, you do. Uh, when you were asked point blank directly, uh, when Ollie was asked point blank directly, w it, would you rather a kid that is suicidal receive supervised medical care or would you deny them that care? Ollie London said, I would deny them that care. Didn't say it like that. Ollie London said, I would give them something else. But what that means is I would deny them the care that they needed. So yes, Ethan was correct to say that. Absolutely below the belt interviewer who desperately tried to twist my words for clickbait and views. Well, the views for sure are going to roll in, uh, Ollie London. This video has, this video alone has 36,000 views and the full episode, real quick, the full episode has 839,000 views. The original episode, almost a million views. So yeah, the views are definitely coming in. Uh, but I don't think it was because of any desperate twisting. You did the desperate slithering and the desperate twisting yourself. I believe in the importance of respecting others despite their opinions. And I believe, like when you call people groomers, you fucking sick fuck. And believe in the importance of having sensible and respectable debate. You mean when you call people groomers without evidence and you say that a drag queen might be doing grooming by reading the rainbow fish to kids in normal clothing? You fucking sick piece of shit. Sadly, this person has no idea what respect really means. L ratio, true. L plus ratio. It's about trying to educate people. Jamie Mitchell, there you go. There you go. There's the fucking gays against groomers coming to cope in. Come on in. Let me jerk you off again. Don't worry, Ollie. You'll feel better. Here, let me let me jerk off your surgically altered Korean dick. Holy fuck holy motherfucking god left wing outlets tend to hate anyone that has a slightly different opinion <laughs> oh my god what is this profile picture oh no oh god there's ollie london with facial hair i think it's drawn on facial hair oh jesus christ Oh, God. Oh, yeah, by the way, just, just so we know, this is Ollie London creepily stalking Dylan Mulvaney. Dylan Mulvaney, who to my knowledge, has done nothing to Ollie London. Dylan Mulvaney, who is basically the most milk toast TikToker you can imagine, just look at this, stalking. Look at the media tab, the entire media tab for the last day is just repeatedly posting pictures of Dylan Mulvaney and, and misgendering Dylan Mulvaney. Ollie London is the biggest piece of shit. I, I truly hope that Ollie London never sees the light of day after this fucking, uh, after this fucking nightmare of an interview. Huge props to Ethan. Ethan completely outmaneuvered Ollie and uh, set and, and literally just allowed L Ollie to talk himself into a corner and then capitalized on that fact. Ollie London did the most damage to Ollie London. Ethan just helped Ollie London along. Literally Google Ollie right now and the top images of him are so much worse than anything of, of Dylan's. Yeah, of course. Uh, Dil uh, Ollie London is a complete and utter blatant grifter, a weird creepy stalker, uh, a, a totally deranged, oh my God, literally, oh my God, look, it continues. This is all within like 10 hours. D uh, Dylan Mulvaney tweet. Dylan Mulvaney tweet. Uh, hold on. Hold on. 
Dylan Mulvaney tweet, 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 all day, all day tweeting about Dylan Mulvaney. Ollie London is is a genuinely unwell person, a truly, uh, uh, a, a, tr a truly ups upsetting individual to get to, to witness. And also, uh, Ethan is a hundred percent right. God will judge Ollie London. Ollie won Ollie London, uh, will be judged by the God that he so-called believes in, that he lies about, because obviously I believe that's a grift too. What fucking trash. Oh yeah, here's, here's more of this, by the way. Here's, this is an event, okay? Uh, I can't show this on stream. God damn it, I can't show this on stream because it's, sexually promiscuous. One of the images is sexually promiscuous. D uh, Ollie London has a picture of a drag performer with fake exposed breasts at, at one event next to pictures of this drag queen at different events where they are not, they do not have their exposed breasts. And they are saying, uh, they are calling them dangerous to children because of an event that they did at one point where they had where they were topless with fake breasts. The fake breasts were the topless part. And they're saying they're dangerous to be around kids because they put two pictures of two separate events next to each other. Just so disgusting. I fucking despise people like Ollie London. People like Ollie London do damage to the tr to trans people. They harm children. They are assisting in a genocide against trans people. And worst of all, Perhaps worst of all, they do so for purely self-enriching reasons. Ollie London is such a short-sighted person. Ollie London doesn't even have any beliefs. Ollie London can't even figure out who he is. And when I say that Ollie London has identity issues, it's not about gender. Ollie London has identity issues in general. Seven months ago, Ollie London was a, a out trans woman uh, and now Ollie London is ha is doing the right wing circuit and writing a book targeting uh, anti trans people purely for self enriching purposes. What a disgusting individual! What a hollowed out and empty person! Huge props to Ethan from H three H three for absolutely demolishing this complete and utter fraud. My lovely lovely imps, if you enjoyed this react, if you enjoyed. Uh, watching all of my my additional jokes, the added context and whatever else, all the other stuff that I talked about, please make sure that you press the like button below, subscribe to the Demon Mama channel, and of course, leave me a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts. Your comments help these, this channel grow massively. So leave me a like, comment, and press subscribe. And thank you for tuning in.